beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the Word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Your words have prophetic implications. And that every time you begin to speak, you send signals in the spirit. You know how a plane is coming and there is a communication between the tower and the plane. When you prophesy, you send signals in the spirit. Hallelujah. We are training you to be a dangerous people. Dangerous. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he stepped into a place. He didn't talk to the demons. He didn't talk to the devils. But when they saw him, they began to make negotiations. When you become so full of the word and so full of the Holy Ghost, you become dangerous. At that point, you can dislodge principalities and powers over your family and over your life. Say, I'm not weak. I am strong. Strong in the Lord. Yes. Daniel 11, 32. It says, and they that know their God, they shall be strong. They shall do exploits. Hallelujah. You are not wasting your time here. Every time you invest in the word, every time you invest in the presence of god i assure you you are not wasting your time god is building you as you pray in the holy ghost as you worship because satan is mapping out his arsenals and on the other side god is raising an army and kingdoms will rise against kingdoms but light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it never has there been a time where light had to negotiate with darkness and the bible says the entrance of his word give that light so you become full of that light everywhere you step in you dislodge darkness hallelujah the book of ephesians you see i don't like the devil look at me let me tell you something I don't like the devil i have no business with him he has no business with me we are not friends hallelujah we're going to be studying the book of ephesians it's a bible study so please bring out something to write There are some of you who if you did not hear this girl's testimony you will not bring out writing materials now you are bringing out your bible say i better write now don't be afraid of entering car or entering all of these things 
if the Satan, if, if the devil drives my car, will still enter because he will take me safely. I assure you, he will take me safely. He will not even know what came upon him, but he will drive me safely. See, I've met armed robbers on the road. I have seen demons. It's just that God has said I won't die. You don't know what I've gone through. So don't you just say, I share you are enjoying. Where do you <laughs> When you become full of the word, you will be victorious. See, if you refuse to be full of the word, you will think we are acting this thing on stage. That's the problem. Those who don't invest in the word think he's just acting. They say it's not true, Jared. This person is just talking. When I tell you there is a realm that you can rise above sickness, there is a realm that you can rise above failure, there is a realm that you can rise above the oppressions of Satan. There is such a realm. And we are contending to enter that rest, but there is that rest. And the Bible says, let us therefore labor. This is where we are laboring, in the word, in prayer, so that we we'll enter that rest. There is that rest. Hallelujah. Now, the book of Ephesians, um, it was written by Apostle Paul. I just want to give you a little background. The book of Ephesians, theologically speaking, it's, it's been agreed among theologians and Bible scholars that the book of Ephesians contains one of the highest church truth do you understand it contains one of the the highest explanation it gives the most precise description of the believers work as far as um, our work in the kingdom is concerned paul used the first uh, six chapters to explain uh, different areas of the christian life hallelujah was written to the church in Ephesus helping them to understand the realities of the life I hope you understand that Paul uh, was not necessarily taught his revelations I, I follow me now he got it expressly by the Spirit and so he got his revelation and so he wrote this thing to the church but he was not just supposed to stop with the Ephesian church it was supposed to be spread around all the churches that he had planted because it contains certain truth that Paul had received from the Spirit. And we're going to be considering these things. Hallelujah. Broadly, it's divided into three. The first three chapters of Ephesians talk about our position in Christ. The realities, what we call new creation realities. It helps us to understand who we are on account of what Christ has done for us. So we're going to be examining that. The first three chapters, the book of Ephesians attempts to discuss what we have become it contrasts who we were outside of christ and outside of the commonwealth of israel and then what the redemption of christ has brought to us as a believer hallelujah so at the end of studying the first three chapters of ephesians you are supposed to know who you are the whole concept of the plan of redemption what really happened we fell from grace what kind of grace so you get to understand the concept of grace and of redemption and the fact that for all have sinned the concept of righteousness and the walk the 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 the, the resting place hallelujah so it teaches you and reveals to you your position that you are seated with christ in heavenly places that's the summary of the first subdivision of the book of ephesians it teaches you how to walk in the reality of your position seated in christ hallelujah and then chapter four and five gets to discuss what we call the walk of the believer it talks about conduct and character how you walk in the kingdom w-a-l-k it teaches you how to walk how you can live as a kingdom citizen begins to guide you on the principles that's where it begins to talk of spirit filled living talking about living in the word living in character living conducting yourself such that you can be seen as a christian hallelujah and then chapter 6 teaches you how to stand 
hallelujah that's where a lot of ministries get the concept of warfare it teaches you how to stand in your position in christ against the wiles of the devil so it teaches you your position of rest in christ and then it teaches you how to walk and then it teaches you how to stand hallelujah tells you how to stand with all the armor that you have been equipped with the breastplate of righteousness the helmet of salvation your shoe girded about it tells you all of those things holding for the shield of faith wherewith you will quench all the fiery darts so we are going to be examining this at the end of this study you are supposed to come into that experiential position where you know who you are in christ you are aware you are convinced of the blessings and the benefits of redemption and then you know how to walk and to live as a christian now the entire book is very every time you are studying the book of ephesians it's important to study all the six chapters because when you study only one part of it you will have a, a misguided knowledge hallelujah if the bible tells us we have been seated in christ why does it teach us to stand against the wiles of the enemy again are you following me now if the bible tells us that we are seated in christ then why should it tell us again to still guard i mean you are seated with christ satan cannot come there the bible says he was judged out of heaven and there was no place for him again remember the book of revelations he said there was war in heaven lucifer that old serpent he was judged casted to the earth and there was no more place for him that's what jesus was speaking in luke when he said i beheld satan falling as lightning why as lightning because the angels move in that speed he said he make at his angels wind and his ministers flames of fire and so he was casted from the heavens because remember in the book of job the bible says when the sons of god gathered satan was in their midst i hope you realize that the bible was not written in chronological order that means in the order with which they happen if the bible was written in chronological order job would be before exodus are you listening to me so the bible was not arranged in chronological order the dispensation of job was called the dispensation of conscience because we do not see the manifestations of the law there hallelujah the progression of the dealings of god with man is that from the garden of eden right from the garden of eden when man fell the word of god reveals to us that god had known i hope you realize that god immediately man fell it was revealed in the garden there that the redemption of man will be the ultimate uh, solution through the shed blood of jesus christ because the bible says that god killed a lamb and used it to cover what adam and eve that was a type of the substitutionary work of jesus it was a prophetic type of the atonement shown in the garden there are you listening to me and now adam adam was the first man god created after the judgment listen to me not the first man that was created in eternities adam is not the first man who was created from forever no adam was the first man created after the fall of lucifer genesis chapter 1 verse 1 we're doing bible study the bible says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth then verse 2 says now the earth was dark and void and formless comes from two hebrew words tohu bohu all of them all these greek words they mean confusion and chaos darkness every time the bible talks about darkness there are three words one ignorance two confusion three the manifestation of the workings of the flesh so every time you study the bible and it talks about darkness it's talking about confusion it's talking about ignorance every time the bible talks of light it doesn't just talk of the presence of god it talks of illumination and god said let there be light that light was not sunlight because a few verses later the bible says god made many lights so what lights did he say let there be hallelujah so let's establish the fact that Abba, adam was not the first man on the earth he was the first man created in the image and the likeness of god why because i needed to understand that between genesis 1 verse 1 and genesis 1 verse 2 were many many years are you listening to me it didn't just happen the way the bible summarized it 
Daniel 28. That's where the Bible gives us a description of the one we know as Satan today. The one we call Lucifer. I hope you know Lucifer was once an archangel. Lucifer was the archangel in charge of worship. Just like Michael being the archangel in charge of war. Every time the Bible talks of the manifestation of war and standing in for the saints, the archangel that is sent is Michael. And every time there is an activity that requires service, delivering a message is who? Gabriel. That's why when Daniel was praying, Daniel said he began to pray and for three weeks he was praying and Gabriel was bringing him a message but the prince that was surrounding the territory of Persia because the Bible tells us that the, it gives us the, 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 the arrangement, the strategic arrangement of what we want to call the satanic kingdom. Hallelujah. It says we do not our, our, our wrestle is not against flesh and blood but against what? Principalities and powers and rulers. And then he talks of some that do not function in the earth realm. He calls them spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. These are the ones that are in charge of territories. And now this spiritual wickedness was in charge of Persia. Because Daniel and the other people were caught in the Babylonian captivity at that time. And so he, he began to seek the face of the Lord. Hallelujah. And when Gabriel was bringing the reply, the prince of Persia stopped Gabriel. But Gabriel is an archangel. Should he not fight? No. The angels do not break their ranks. And so he kept praying until Michael, the archangel, came. Hallelujah. Remember in the book of Jude, when the Bible says, some of you don't read your Bible, when there was struggle over the body of Moses, the Bible says how that, who? Who? michael was struggling he was supposed to take the body of moses and sit and say it belongs to me and now michael could not fight here he said the lord because this was satan are you listening to me now the lord rebuke you are you still here so satan was cast and when he was cast I want you to understand according to scripture the bible says one third of the angels fell with him hallelujah imagine the kind of influence satan was the value cherub the bible calls him there's no time sorry i would have gone in depth hallelujah he calls him the value cherub that covereth his embodiment it was made of the objects of worship and he had access to the heavens and the earth i hope you know by that time the then heaven here was there was no blockage between the heavens and the earth there was free access and satan could walk upon the holy mount of god until iniquity was found in him what was the iniquity he said i will exalt myself and i will arise above the stars of god he wanted the position of god because he felt he could legislate and satan alongside all the other demons one of them being the demon spirits called Leviathan. How many of you have read about Leviathan? Some of you don't read your Bible. Only I, I receive. This it just makes you grounded. And then the Bible talks about the manifestation of Satan again. It talks of Apollyon. These were all of the, of the angels that fell together with Lucifer. Hallelujah. And so when they fell, you see, flood in scripture is symbolic of judgment. Are you listening to me? That was the judge it was the judgment of lucifer he's casting down from the heavens that led to the chaos of genesis 1 verse 2 do you understand now now the earth was dark void and then the bible when it was time to recreate the earth then elohim the father the son and the holy spirit the singular is eloha one of the trinity three of them or any once is more than one is elohim in the hebrew and elohim said light in other words i withdrew you that light listen is the life giving dimension of god because when jesus manifested in the book of john the bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he said he was with god in the beginning and through him was all things made and without him was nothing made that was made he said in him was what light and that light was the life of man so when he was saying let there be light he was releasing that factor that dimension of him that causes things to exist he said let there be light 
and he said there was light and he saw that it was good then he began to recreate the earth and then he made man from the dust of the earth i hope you know when he made man the word man there is adam adam is not just the name of adam are you listening to me in the hebrew adam is man dust the woman was inside the man when he pronounced the blessing that's why whether you're a woman or man you can walk in the reality of what the word of god says the separation happened in genesis chapter 2 when he caused man to sleep and he took out of that man the rib and created the woman hallelujah are you following me now so when you say women are weaker vessels based on what because when the blessing was being spoken to the man adam the woman was in the man are you listening to me now and so adam became the the first recreated man in the image and the likeness of god what is the image of god the image of god is not physical the likeness of god means two hands god has two hands not three the bible tells us there is a right hand meaning there is a left one are you listening to me you would have just said hand hallelujah you use scripture to compare scripture we call it systematic theology how you can use one scripture to explain and give light to another scripture and then you are you are unable to take just one aspect of scripture and create a doctrine out of it until you can find the same operation in both the old and the new testament because the bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses is a matter established are you following me now so one is the number of unity two is the number of witness are you listening to me when the bible says here O israel the lord your god is one now hebrew is a very big word the only word that is close to hebrew is, that we can liken in nigeria is yoruba you can have many words do you understand for instance the word en in hebrew n it means what is at for so it depends on the context you need the holy ghost to be able to interpret some of these scriptures that's why those who interpreted the early translations of the bible misuse certain words like authority and power there are four words in scripture that are used to connote power one is called kratos one is called iskos one is called exousia the other one is called dunamis most people just know dunamis and exousia exousia is the outworking of the word every time you take in the word in your spirit what happens is there is a build up of what we call kratos the in walking of the word when you are full of the word what you release is the outworking exousia the power of atony you are so full of the word that now you can represent him and so when you take out time and pray in tongues the build up of that dimension in you is called iskos it's the power the inner workings of the spirit when he said building up yourself on your most holy faith that's the build up so when you lay hands on the sick what you release is dunamis the power the ability of the spirit able to reproduce itself that's why you can lay hands on 100 people it's like fire you can use one candlestick to light many are you listening to me now where are we we've left the book of Ephesians are you learning something we want us to know the word of god and to appreciate the workings of the word so god created man let me tell you something about satan satan is a spirit one of the fallen angels now fallen are you listening to me he is fallen see after me satan is falling there are certain attributes of satan i would want you to know even as we start number one satan is not omnipotent in fact let me put it this way there are three attributes that make god god all by himself number one he's omnipotent the word omni means all potent means ability all powerful omnipotent the, number two he's omniscient omniscient means all knowing all knowing he knows all things number three he's omnipresent the psalmist said where can we hide from your presence omnipresent means he's everywhere whoever can possess these three attributes at any given time is called god whoever at any given time can be omnipotent omnipresent omniscient god this is what satan cannot be everywhere at the same time are you listening to me for instance he's not here 
are you listening to me so don't just sit in that fear and say hey, is satan no satan is not everywhere he cannot be everywhere at the same time because when he went to god in the book of job god asked him he said ah from where are you coming he said what from going to and fro but you never hear god saying going through and through it's only his eyes that go through and fro he's called alpha omega the word and is an error in the translation it's not and omega alpha omega that means there is nothing called future in his presence everything lays bare it's not called alpha and omega alpha is the first of the hebrew letters omega is the is the last so it says he's the first and the last alpha omega hallelujah and so satan manifests with different spirits different manifestations of spirits hallelujah and there are many of them death is one of them death is not a phenomenon death is a spirit are you listening to me the bible says that there were four riders upon the horse in the book of revelation and he said one of them held a pair of balances and the name of that spirit is death so it's a spirit hell is a spirit for instance hell is not just a location i've told you hell is in the earth hell is right at the center of the earth hell lies in the shape of a man and enlarges itself every time the psalm is seeing this by revelation he said hell enlarge itself he said i will go down to the pit where their worm dieth not hallelujah i hope you know that jonah went to hell Jonah didn't just stay in the belly of the fish. Jonah went to hell. Jonah began to give descriptions of the gates and those in chains and in hell. So hell is a spirit. The Bible says that at the judgment when the sea will give up all those that died in it. Are you listening to me? And then he said hell will give up all those that died in it. He said hell death the last spirit that will be destroyed is death he said hell death and the grave will be cast into the lake of fire no man is in the lake of fire right now the lake of fire is part of god's kingdom he designed the lake of fire for the punishment of satan so all those that have died and gone to hell have not started the punishment it is when satan is officially taken to hell that their punishment will start reading because every time we, we call it in theology the doctrine of interpenetration. How two people can become one. That's the mystery of marriage. Wherefore shall a man leave his what? Father and mother and cleave to his wife and they two shall become what? One. That's how the bride and the spirit, the church and the Holy Ghost became one. He that is joined to Christ is what? One spirit. Now he that is joined to Satan is also one spirit. Are you listening to me? He that is joined to Satan is one spirit. So how does satan carry out all his activities he tries to mimic the operation of the trinity because the administrative structure of heaven is such that the father is always the initiator the word is the one who speaks things into be the holy spirit is the pentecostal arm of the trinity he's the one who makes things happen that's why in genesis chapter 1 verse 2 he was the first of the deity to be revealed and the spirit of god hovered round the face of the waters now satan also tries to mimic the operational organogram of heaven by trying to create what we know as 666 666 is not just something people will receive on their head and their hand 6666 is the number of a man are you listening to me one is the number of unity two is the number of witness three is the number of establishing a thing and then it's also the number of trinity four is the operation of the holy spirit five is the number of grace and mercy six is the number of a man seven is the number of perfection eight is the number of new beginnings are you following me now so six 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 is satan trying to mimic the operation of god the first six stands for satan who wants to be the father himself the second six stands for the antichrist the antichrist is both a system and a person the antichrist government started at the birth of cain 
and Cain departed from the presence of God and built a city naming it after his son Enoch the same spirit of the Antichrist followed Nimrod and Nimrod said let's build a city whose tower will reach the heaven the same spirit was upon Nebuchadnezzar and he built Babylon the same spirit was upon Jezebel and Ahaz the same spirit was upon Herod the same spirit was upon Herod in the book of Acts and the same spirit is what is explained in the book of Revelation the mystery Babylon so there is the Antichrist as a system but there is the Antichrist as a person and that person is the one who tries to mimic Jesus when you read the book of Revelation it tells us that the Antichrist will not have anything to do with women because Jesus did not marry the Antichrist will die and he will come back to life power will be given to him the dragon will give him power and then the last six stands for the false prophets who stand trying to mimic the Holy Spirit why are they many because the Holy Spirit is the only Holy Spirit we have we don't have many we have him but because satan cannot be omnipresent so he uses many people your rap artists your your the, the touts around town they are all the manifestation of that spirit are you getting something so satan is not a mystery satan is a person he cannot be everywhere at the same time are you listening to me and hear what I, I know why i'm talking to you about satan because we're about to examine something briefly seated with christ the book of ephesians we're, we're taking the first chapters when when you when i read the chapters now you will understand based on the foundations that i've laid now look at me please quickly let me explain something what did man lose i need to explain to you what man lost first and foremost please can i have someone a guy and then can i have someone help me with a veil please we are going to the Garden of Eden right now. I'm not going to be a lady. I'm not one of the stupid people in society who change themselves from men, from men to women. Hallelujah. Now, this is righteousness. This is not a woman. Righteousness. Hallelujah. Now, look, look at me. Listen. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and Elohim said let us make man in our own image are you listening to me and now the Bible says that Christ is the express image of God that means let us make man in Christ are you listening to me that means let us look at the word and reproduce man out of the word the first Adam was created the second Adam was born unto us a child is given are you listening to me that's why he he was when jesus came to the earth listen to me he was the only son of the father when he resurrected after acts chapter 2 he became the firstborn of the begotten he's no longer the only son of the father what are you are you listening to me you are a son whether you are a lady the word son is not male figure the word son is weos and technon i've taught you this weos and technon technon means a child baby one who is void of knowledge but you are still son so the bible says as many as received him he gave them power to become sons are you listening to me so now this is adam listen adam was made in the image and the likeness of christ and authority was given to adam listen the condition to be able to walk with god is that you must have righteousness equal to that of jesus not less are you listening to me so god created man in the very righteousness of christ so god could come in the cool of the day and function with man but you know before man was created satan had already been casted so he was roaming around that's why he told him he said subdue the word subdue means there's an enemy roaming around are you listening to me now watch this satan comes in genesis chapter 3 and meets eve why eve because eve was the woman taken out of man the authority was given to man are you listening to me and satan came to eve in an attempt to tempt eve because adam loved eve i hope you realize that when eve was eating of the tree adam was not somewhere tilling the ground he was there with her so ladies don't let anybody tell you it's you that caused trouble why didn't he stop her adam was there she ate it and gave him what made him to eat it love 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 is still what is throwing people today love 
No, now follow this. Are you listening to me? So Satan, listen. Satan's ultimate quest was not Eve. He needed to use Eve to get Adam. So now the second Adam comes as Christ, and the Eve is now the church. Are you listening to me? So Satan still wants to take that authority, but now he's attacking the Eve of the second Adam, which is the church, the body of Christ. That's why the Bible calls us the bride of Christ. We are the bride of that second Adam. Now, he has righteousness. Satan comes and tells Eve, did God really say that in the day you eat of this tree, you will die? Let me tell you Satan's strategy. Every time Satan comes to you, the first thing he will do is to attack what God told you. God announced over Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He goes to the wilderness after 40 days. Satan said, if you are really the son of God. Didn't God just say it? 40 days ago, God said it. Satan said, if it is true, prove it. Just like Satan looks at you and says, if you are truly beautiful, prove it. And he said, man shall not live by bread alone. What is bread? A bread is what nourishes the body. So man shall not live by sensory perceptions alone, but by every rhema, every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Are you following me now? We've not even started the teaching of Ephesians. This is just the background. Hallelujah. Now, Adam was created having this. Say righteousness. Now, right, everybody. Righteousness is the ability to stand in the father's presence righteousness is the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt without a sense of inferiority and without a sense of condemnation the ability to stand in the father's presence when you were growing up and you stole meat when they got to know about it you, you almost wanted to die when your father was coming back home because you've lost righteousness. That ability to stand. When your result is good, you run home. And you, you can't wait for your father to come. But when, when it's not the way you hoped for it to be, you'll be wishing that you would travel. That's righteousness. Are you listening to me? So Adam had this. Anyone who did not have this righteousness cannot relate with God. Watch this. So when man fell, I hope you realize that man did not fall by eating the fruit. Eating the fruit was the proof that he had fallen. Because death is first spiritual before physical. I hope you know Adam did not die physically yet. He lived many hundreds of years ago. Death was the natural consequence of the deterioration of the sin nature. We'll talk about that. I just want you to understand this concept first. So when man fell, watch what happened the first thing that happened is when they ate the bible says their eyes were what open look up there were two trees in the garden of eden one was called what one get your sunday school book one was called what some of you didn't even go to sunday school you were buying ice cream with or, 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 your offering and playing ball with oranges where your friends were receiving the word of the lord one is called the tree of life the other is called what now the tree of life the job of the tree of life is to make you live forever in whatever state you are in are you listening to me whatever state you are in you have to remain in the in that state if you eat of the tree of life so when god created man in his image eating of the tree of life will keep him in that state so by reproduction he will give birth to many children after his kind who are after the kind of god are you listening to me now the tree of the knowledge of good and evil exposes you to two things it opens your eyes truly to begin to be aware why good and evil adam did not know that that there was judgment upon satan he didn't know certain evils that happened before he came are you listening to me so satan did not really lie when he said you shall be like god you will know some things that have happened that there is more than you are seeing so when he came to him he when he ate and Eve ate, what happened? Their eyes. They had eaten. Listen. Everything you receive through Satan will give you these two things. Good, but with it will come a measure of evil. Knowledge of good and evil. And the whole journey from Genesis to Revelation is everybody choosing whether he will eat between the knowledge of, of the tree of life or 
of good and evil because in the book of revelations we see that there was a tree of life in the throne of god the other three had disappeared because everyone that made it must have chosen the tree of life so there is no more tree of the knowledge of good and evil are you following me please hmm. their eyes were open what happened they suddenly realized they were naked what covered them in the first place shekinah the cupboard of god the literal glory of god the way it covered the face of moses it covered the entire structure of them so they did not even see their nakedness but they were naked are you following me now now the glory lifted and this is what they lost man lost three things when he fell number one he lost the holy ghost the breath of life the one who will guide and instruct him number two he lost righteousness look at this this was lost so man the soul of man according to the tripartite nature of man i hope you know you are a spirit you live in a body and you have what a soul when we talk of soul what are we talking about it's just your spirit in the consciousness of your will emotions and intellect now watch this please man falls all right and suddenly he discovered look at the manifestations of the soul now his spirit died what is death separation from the spirit of god the spirit of god left man instantly he died he said in the day you eat of that tree you shall what die that means you shall be separated from my spirit at that point we see solical manifestations suddenly he was afraid suddenly he was timid and they went to hide and the bible says in genesis chapter 3 and he heard the voice of god walking in the cool of the day the literal hebrew rendition is and god and the talking spirit was walking in the cool of the day and he said adam where art thou and adam said i had thy voice and i hid because i was what naked he said who told you that means everything you know today somebody told you whether it's right or wrong somebody told you and adam said what the woman he didn't say my wife again you see where family controversy started from he said the woman you gave me this woman i was minding my business you came to come and produce something out of my read the woman and now he said woman why have you done this then listen certain curses began to come one of it was the cause of tilling the ground he said in your sweat shall you eat and to the woman he said the travail of childbirth are you listening to me and the ground was cursed and to the serpent i hope you know the serpent was one day we'll talk about that i'm not ready to say something now you are not okay no problem when we are talking about the war <laughs> the the standing i would tell you why is satan interested in snakes have you wondered why what is it about serpents and people the traditional people in your village people who have dreams and see snakes why not monkey why not why not goat we will explain that because you will find out that before the snake fell the serpent was not the serpent was not crawling the way it used to crawl hallelujah we're going to study the word we we'll examine a lot of controversial things for instance the bible tells us enoch the father of seth the father of adam the son of god or the son of seth the son of adam where did he leave cain and abel read your bible they were not among the genealogy ah then the bible says adam knew his wife and he gave birth to cain he didn't tell us he knew his wife again meaning he slept with his wife but we see abel manifesting the second time adam will know his wife they gave birth to seth and he said on that day men began again to call upon the name of the lord so were they twins sila the second question is where did cain get his wife from because cain was banished are you listening to me I will make you love your Bible. And then we will examine again what really happened that suddenly, look at me, the Bible says by their fruit we shall what? How come Cain and Abel, the Bible never tells us that Adam is the father of all the living, but it tells us Eve is the mother of all the living. Bible, what are you saying? Don't confuse us here. 
Because now we see Adam and we see, I mean we see Cain and we see Abel. Suddenly we see the manifestation of the workings of the spirit in the life of Abel. But we see the manifestation of Satan in the life of Abel. And God told him, hey. To the point that Cain will now kill his brother. And God told him, sin lieth at your door. Who taught him all these things? I thought they were the first children of, of Adam and Eve. Who taught them the concept of sin and the concept of falling? Who is the father of Cain? Who is the father of Abel? Who is really their father? Because this was the revelation Paul was trying to give the people in Romans chapter 7. He said, within me, although I came out from one womb, the womb of the word of God, I see the manifestation of two persons in me. He said, with my spirit I serve God. However, I turn and I see another law walking in my members. So that the things that I want to do, I do not find myself doing. And the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. He said, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Then verse 8, chapter 8 verse 1 starts, he said, there is therefore now no condemnation to a certain kind of people. Are you seeing the relevance? Don't think we are just bamboozing through history. No, 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 no. We are trying to check something. Because the Bible says Cain departed from the presence of God and built a city. That's where the Antichrist government started from. It started from Cain. How did this happen? Didn't Adam teach his children well? Could it be that Cain had another father? Sila. So man lost righteousness. Hallelujah. When man lost, lost righteousness, he ran away from God. Listen, from that time, I hope you realize that the law, the prophets, and all of these things were only interims. Do you know the law that the law was not part of God's original agenda for man? You know the manifestation of the prophets of old. The prophets of old played both prophetic and apostolic roles. Because one of the proof of an apostle is that you must have an encounter with the Lord Jesus directly. Paul said, am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus? Are ye not the seal of my apostleship? Are you listening to me? Now, no man had at any time seen the word. Because until then, the word had never found expression physically. He was only the word. Are you listening to me now? It was only when the Holy Spirit turned the word to become a seed and planted. The Bible says he appeared before men and they saw him. He was full of grace and truth. So until then, no man ever knew how the word looked like. His original name was not Jesus. I hope you know that. Jesus was the name he took when he, bore, when he had a body. Because when the prophet prophesied, he said, Ye shall call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel is a Hebrew word that means God in our midst. God with us. Jesus was never called Emmanuel once. Is it? Was he called Emmanuel in your Bible? They gave him Jesus. There are Mexicans that bear Jesus today. Jesus is simply, the Hebrew is Jehoshua. That's where you get Joshua. It means God our salvation. That's where they get Yeshua. Because they pronounce Y for J. Yeshua. That's why you see some versions. They say Hallelujah. Instead of Yah, you see J. Hallelujah or Hallelujah. Some people say Hallelujah. Are, are, you, are you learning something, please? We're examining the book of Ephesians. And there are certain foundations that you must have. So man left the presence of God. When he left the presence of God, what happened? That began what we know today as experiment. The Holy Spirit was supposed to lead man into perfection. But now man had fallen. Are you listening to me? So he had to now start using his mind. And then wickedness began to grow. And then later we are going to be studying how that the Bible says that the sons of God slept with the daughters of men. And they gave birth to certain kinds of things. They corrupted the race. Men with six fingers and six toes. Unusually big. That's where Goliath came from. So what happened? When we study, I'm going to show you from the Bible the origin of HIV AIDS. And you will know that HIV AIDS is called acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. It's something that came from the interaction of the realm of the spirit and this realm. That's why when it comes into you, it attempts to change your DNA. It paralyzes your immune system. The solution is not just medicine. The solution is the power of God. 
this is what is is taught in the film you know to be x-men that there are certain people by reason of genetic mutation acquired certain supernatural ability and then they say a war will happen one day on the earth that's the prediction of the films you watch and they are not lying that is the watch between the sons of light and the corrupt race some of the films you watch some of the pictures and the demons that they come from do you know they are real demons one day i saw the advert of a movie and i saw a you know all these kind of funny films i've seen that demon in the realm of the spirit and they used the mask of the demon in a real film i said what the heck the producers of these films are real men of the spirit don't you think they are just intellectuals they say he has phd whatever uh -uh. these men go by divination and sorcery and they have a covenant with satan and they come up with the pictorial representation of these demons for instance the way michael jackson dances is a, a there is a, there are evil spirits that dance that exact way it is when they inhabited him that he started doing that it's not a lie this is true hmm. ephesians chapter one we're out of time the time has even gone don't go and sit maybe you want to go and sit okay go and sit i'll use somebody else paul an apostle of jesus christ by the will of god to the saints who are at ephesus and to the faithful in christ please take on your bible we are reading i'm going to read um this is part one the book of ephesians part one grace be unto you and peace from god our father and from the lord jesus christ verse three blessed be god and father of our lord jesus christ who had blessed us with what spiritual blessings where spiritual blessings in heavenly places he said according as he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world so you have been chosen that means your life listen the bible says those he predestinated those he called he justified he glorified you are not just an accident you have been planned are you listening to me something happened on the way by but by the wisdom of the spirit there was a plan of redemption to bridge the gap now god wants us to continue what would have happened if man did not fall if man did not fall what will we be doing i hope you know if man did not fall there will no there will not be apostles and prophets and teachers and pastors they came because of the fall their ministry will end one day when will it end when the saints come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ so those who say there are no apostles again there are no prophets there's no need arguing ask yourself has the church come to the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ if not then the ministry of apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors is still valid hallelujah the apostles break the ground they build the people they equip the people the evangelists by the anointing of the holy spirit bring people from the fold of darkness the pastor the word pastor is shepherd and that is not even a teaching title that is an administrative title the word pastor is the word father so they father the people they help them they build them a pastor is not just a preacher are you listening to me and then there are the prophets they reveal the oracles they reveal the blueprint and they give direction so the apostles receive the signals from the prophets what is god saying and they are the ones that have the faith and the audacity to go through it agabus revealed to paul he said whoever has this girdle is going to jerusalem and he gave paul direction paul said god has already shown me but he said i will go they are the ones who plow the ground that's why he makes us stubborn before he sends us because kai the people that were sent to are not they are very stubborn people prophets are see as they can be quiet and calm but apostles are not quiet people doesn't mean you should just be stubborn and say oh this is the secret of being an apostle i will not obey my mother again <laughs> let's continue <laughs> having predestinated us into the adoption of sons by jesus christ himself according to the good pleasure why does the bible use adoption adoption means that we belong to another kingdom before when you adopt a child what do you do you take that child and engraft that child to become your own hallelujah to the praise verse 6 of the glory of his grace through which he had made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption listen now in whom we have redemption how through his blood and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace now look at this the bible says 
there were hebrews and we're talking about seated with christ we'll discuss it in brief maybe 10 minutes about the whole concept of redemption what is redemption the word redeem means to salvage to save by paying a ransom hallelujah that you salvage someone by paying a ransom i wrote a book some years ago not guilty never released it but it was a, an attempt to explain to man his present position in light of what christ has done now there was a contention you when you read the book of romans that's where it contrasts between the law and grace down into galatians and colossians and then ephesians it seems that paul had a controversy because the jews and the gentiles had an issue watch this the jews were god's covenant nation the gentiles every time i use the word gentile it means whoever was not a jew real jew from nation of israel so we we are called what gentiles are you listening to me those who are separated from the commonwealth of israel now the jews were a people who entered a covenant i hope you know that they entered a covenant with god sealed by what circumcision are you listening to me it was a covenant with god because they needed to be a separate people with whom the messiah would show up now the gentile nation they were hidden nations they did not love god they served other gods when jesus christ came listen remember that when he was sending the 12 and the 70 he told them do not go any other place go to the lost ship of israel are you listening to me now because he wanted the jews because the jews had paid so much price for jesus christ to come so the bible says a worker is worthy of his wages and he will be the first partaker are you listening to me so the jews were to be the first partaker or uh, the partakers of salvation but they rejected christ and then the blessing came to the gentiles that's why till today those in israel if you've gone to israel for pilgrimage those who are leading the people and driving the cars they are not even born again they don't believe in the messiah they just know that they have a historical monument that is making money for them hallelujah and so here was the problem the jews were saying we are better than every other nation why because we are a covenant people we are circumcised and we are a covenant people now the gentiles were far this is what the jews were saying this is why they rejected the gospel of paul paul was saying for all have sinned what is all have seen jews you have broken all the commandments they've given you gentiles you did not even have you were you fell from adam that's why I said, by one man, sin entered the whole world. Are you listening to me now? The Jews were contending. They said, no, for anyone to receive of the blessings of salvation, he must become a Jew by circumcision. Then from a Jew, he will now become a partaker of God's blessings. And Paul was saying, no. He said, it's not necessary. That the only circumcision that was required was the circumcision of the heart. Hmm, help us, God. So we have redemption through his blood. Our redemption listen to me the word redeem means to bring somebody back to an original state by paying the price are you listening to me according to God's eternal justice the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 18 it says the soul that sinneth it shall die the soul that sinneth it shall die so according to the verdict of God's justice, when man fell, he was judged. Is that correct? In the days of Noah, the Bible makes us to understand that men be began to do things that displeased God and he judged the earth with a flood. And then there were eight people. Noah, his wife, the three sons and their wives. Why? Because eight is the prophetic number for new beginning. So God was beginning a new race. Now, God knew that he would not need to keep killing people and wiping one generation after another. Then they had a plan. And that plan was jesus christ are you listening to me now so the prophets came to guide the people to guide the people in the way of the lord until the manifestation of jesus christ when jesus showed up he showed up as the one john said the one who sent me told me that the one on whom i see the holy spirit descend he is the lamb of god and when he saw him he said behold the lamb of god so everything that happened in the old testament was a foreshadow a foreshadow are you listening to me so jesus comes and walks upon the earth jesus came for two reasons and none of them is to take you to heaven listen to me hallelujah the first reason jesus came was the ministry of reconciliation to reconcile us to the father do you know why we are going to heaven one day <laughs> look at me do you know why we are going to heaven one day because satan must be judged 
and the prophecies that are being written they are called the written judgment they must be executed upon the earth and the bible says let that him that let it will let that means it is the church who are the light of the world that are withholding the manifestation of the antichrist the antichrist cannot manifest when the church is here because light shines in the darkness so don't let anybody fool you with all of yes the government of anti of the antichrist is already being formed are you listening to me but the antichrist cannot show up until the church leaves the holy spirit will need to give way for that manifestation so who are those who will be the missionaries the jews when they see the exit of the church truly they will know that they have been misled because they are waiting for the manifestation of the son he came in a manger and they said according to their prophecies he's supposed to come with great chariots and horses and so they are waiting for the manifestation the coming of jesus the what we well will i call it second coming the second phase of the exit for those of you who have been taught that there is nothing called rapture change your mind there is something called rapture there is no word rapture in the bible just like there's no word trinity in the bible every time you see a word that is used that you cannot find in the bible you search for scriptures to confirm it are you listening to me like trinity jesus comes out of the water the father is speaking the holy ghost comes in bodily form you see the manifestation of trinity but that's not enough because two scriptures must confirm it then we see stephen stephen is full of the holy ghost looks up to heaven and sees the father sitting and the son standing at his right hand now we know that there is something called trinity so rapture the bible tells us in the book of thessalonians and, and many other scriptures how that there will be a time when there will be a glorious exit of the body why so that the vials according to revelation will be poured upon the earth are you listening to me we are the ones who are withholding wickedness do you know i've not even touched on Ephesians. we're just doing general bible study well wherever we can stop we'll soon stop and then pray but are you learning something the word of god is supposed to make you grounded the end of this this is part one in part one we are supposed to learn who we are in christ on account of what christ has done say after me because of what christ has done i am alive today oh dear lord okay let's see how far we can go because paul began to pray paul was praying a prayer to the efficient church that they will see what he saw he prayed in verse in verse 17 he says i pray that i bow my knees for this cause i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you what the spirit of knowledge wisdom and understanding in the knowledge of him your heart being flooded with light that you may know certain things he says that you may know the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints and the exceeding greatness of his power and all of that which he wrought in christ and he said now christ is seated in the heavens okay let's let's wherever oh lord wherever we can stop let's start from where should we start from the holy communion let's just take it from there i have to at least cover some grounds the holy communion what is the holy communion what is the revelation of the holy communion now look up please by this time it was evident that man had fallen and the only remedy is christ because without the shedding of blood there is what no remission of sin and any soul that sinned it shall die is that correct now man sinned i hope you know that the concept of sin listen sin is first a nature before an act are you listening to me so when you see someone fornicating or doing something the sin is not really the fornication the fornication is the effect of that nature in the person the strength of that nature in him because the bible says for instance it says that second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 it says, he who knew no sin became sin did jesus sleep with any woman did he steal any man's property but the bible says he became sin so what is the bible saying he who knew no sin became the embodiment of sin so that we might become the righteousness of god in christ jesus so when man fell he took on that fallen nature that nature of satan man lost his dominion man lost the holy spirit man lost righteousness and all through from genesis chapter 4 down to the manifestation of the sun it was just a transition a, a, a temporary transition awaiting the coming of christ so at the holy communion now jesus had told them he was going to die watch this please he sits with 12 people because 12 is the number of government is that correct 
and what does a government do they represent the people are you listening to me so jesus christ was entering a covenant with the whole world through 12 people using them as a prophetic point of contact so that he could now die for them are you listening to me because there had to be a way for substitution to happen and for substitution to happen christ would have to take on the nature of man in death so that we would now take up his nature in life are you understanding me and that's what the holy communion jesus said except you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood you do not have my life are you listening to me now he had said he's the bread of life and he is the cup the living waters so he took of the bread and broke it and gave the 12 people the moment they ate it there was a legal grounds in the spirit where christ can now take the nature of man that's why after the communion he went straight to gethsemane what was he doing in gethsemane he was crying no he was not crying that's where what we call the exchange began to happen the substitutionary sacrifice of christ are you listening to me him becoming sin for us that we might become the righteousness of god in christ this is what paul is trying to explain if you do not understand what christ has done you will not know who you are you see why it says we are seated with christ sitting symbolizes rest is that correct so everything as far as your redemption is concerned you did not do anything it was christ that did everything so if you try to do what christ has already done it will be futile you just need to embrace what christ has done and walk in the reality of it are you listening to me now when jesus was at gethsemane listen you know why jesus cried and said father if it be thy will please take this cup off me what cup was it the cup of death on the cross no 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 the cup of separation for the first time the trinity were going to be separated the holy spirit who came upon jesus christ like any man at baptism would have to leave him so that he can die are you listening to me <laughs> the holy spirit came back after three days and resurrected him back again from the dead meaning he left him when the bible says he gave up the ghost he gave up his spirit not the holy ghost the holy spirit left him that was the only condition for him to pay the price that he was paying so that cup was the cup of separation because listen it was in gethsemane jesus began to become the adam i hope you know that on the cross he didn't start dying there he finished his death on the cross the death started in gethsemane because adam first died spiritually is that correct and then he died physically so if jesus were to qualify and meet the condition of being the second adam he will have to die spiritually first and what is spiritual death separation from the holy ghost so the holy ghost left him in gethsemane and then they held him watch this from that time he did not become jesus the christ there was no more christ in him christ comes from the word christos the anointed one and his anointing he was no longer the christ he was jesus sin me and you the embodiment of every sinner are you listening to me now he began to pay the price that me and you would have paid so let's have jesus here there's something very lovely the catholics do sam you are jesus they remember during lent period they get a jesus and move him around now watch this man fell every king has a crown on his head is that correct your crown is the symbol of your royalty so man when we fell we lost that symbol of royalty so a crown of thorn was put upon his head in substitution for the restoration of our royalty are you listening to me that's why a crown of thorn was put everything that happened to jesus from gethsemane was the substitution and so they took him he was naked why because the first adam lost the glory and he was naked i hope you know that all the covering you see around jesus was just for social reasons he was naked now when they took him this is what isaiah saw he said who has believed our report to whom has the arm of the lord been revealed he saw jesus battered the same jesus that he said unto us a child is born unto us a son is given now isaiah in his prophecy he was seeing in a vision and he saw jesus disfigured he said he was bruised beyond recognition he said by whose stripes we are healed watch this so jesus christ was taken and the roman whip this is how they flog people sam put your hand here watch this so that there's no hope of touching it it's not the way they flog people now and when it was a way of torturing criminals 
are you listening to me the roman whip had about 10 compartments and at the tip of it they used bottles and nails it was a way to torture criminals so that they'll confess when they flog you with that cane you say there's no hope of lying let me just tell the truth there's 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 no hope of lying it's, it's not wisdom now i want you to understand i'm teaching you the substance this is what paul saw by revelation because he was not there when this was happening are you following me now and they flogged him every time they flogged you the cane will wrap around you and hook to your flesh so when they pull it out part of your flesh will fall that's why they, that's how they beat jesus now isaiah was seeing this and he said this was in exchange in exchange to restore you to health because the soul that sins it shall die are you listening to me now when christ was suffering you were in him are you listening to me why because we took up the communion together so now whatever he's going through in the realm of the spirit we were this is what you would have gone through for your own sins but christ said let me show you love he said you just step by i will do everything for you whatever the result is i will get it so when somebody tells you ladies when he says, if not you enter well tell him just love me like jesus that's all i want <laughs> and you will see whether i can truly love like jesus do you know what jesus went through we were going to die and jesus said no you can't go through this he told the whole world he said stand come into me by covenant and let me suffer for you so that everything i'm doing you see that so satan did not know when jesus gave himself satan was out to destroy the seed of the woman because there was prophecy that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent so when jesus gave himself satan was happy and he said crucify him he did not know that there was a covenant paying the price for the whole world are you getting it now so he was happy when they were beating jesus and the life of the flesh is in the blood when man was created from the beginning there was no blood when jesus christ resurrected there was no blood and it is that bloodless life that he gave you follow me listen 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 i want to shock you i know many of you say, ah, don't deceive us okay hallelujah now jesus was beaten when he was beaten they spat on him they did everything the bible says in galatians chapter 3 christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law who are the us gentiles being made what how did he redeem us by becoming the cause according to jewish culture every man who carries a tree you know it was a tree that fell man from the beginning so christ had to now carry that tree are you listening to me it was from the foot of the tree that man solidified his fall now he lifted it to golgotha golgotha is called the place of the skull that was where adam it was where adam died the skull the place of golgotha golgotha means the place of the skull the exact same place he was going there to be the second adam are you listening to me now when he took off the cross he became the curse so that in him i was carrying my cross too are you listening to me and then while he was going to that cross he encountered a man called simon simeon of cyrene you know who Simeon of Cyrene is? He was a black man. This is why I tell you, Africa and the black race participated in the substitutionary work of Christ. That's why there is a glory that Africa will reveal before Christ comes. Yes, it's prophetic. When Christ was suffering, the Bible says that who will partake of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that follows. So that Simon was a black man. It's not today they started belittling the black race. And so they said carry the cross now the african continent in one man participated and helped jesus christ helped him and took that cross and he took him to the cross watch this now jesus is in the cross there are two thieves whatever they stole they are on one side and another side and jesus is here are you listening to me now he stretched his hands listen the death on the cross was the worst form of death they will call everybody in the city to come and look at you jesus was hung naked a 33 year old man the only clothing on him was the blood watch this and he stood on that cross and when they nailed him his hands and his feet blood was already flowing listen the moment the blood 
touched the earth it gave room for the atonement of our sins are you listening to me because man was made from the earth when that blood touched the earth when he hung upon that cross it was a substitution it was him conquering the tree and the power of the nature of satan are you listening to me and he hung there on that cross and then they pierced his side and blood and water came out meaning he died of a ruptured heart jesus hung there and while he looked at the he looked at everybody the father had turned against him because the father turns against every sinner now jesus had become a sinner and when he looked to heaven he didn't see the father looking at him again and he said eloi eloi lamak tabaks and i he said how will you turn your face now jesus had become you and me are you listening to me the holy spirit was not there to help him no angel was there to help him he was alone on that cross and then he gave up the ghost guess what happened when he gave up the ghost he had died there was joy in hell why because the seed of the woman who was prophesied that would bruise the head of the serpent and restore man had now died but they did not know that except a corn falls to the ground and dies this was a prophetic mystery it was the secret of reproduction so jesus sowed himself in upon the earth when they were burying him it was that seed that seed of abraham that would be sown upon the earth and suddenly he appeared in hell they just saw jesus christ appearing in hell and satan said what a mean why did he go to hell because when sinners die they go to hell jesus died a sinner he couldn't have gone to heaven he went to the hell that we were all supposed to go to that means there is no need for anybody today to go to hell again because he has tasted death once for every man are you getting blessed we'll soon round up and now when he went to hell the bible says that all of the cohorts of hell were on him remember that all satan wanted was to be acknowledged as one above god now christ came as the express image and satan told him if you would just bow down to me i will give you the whole world jesus never said it's a lie you don't have the whole world because as at that time satan was a, he held the keys that he collected from adam are you listening to me he held the keys and so jesus went that was the key that held your destiny your life your breakthrough your healing for the entire race you couldn't have done it by yourself and so jesus said don't worry i will go and do it for you now when he stepped all the demons were upon him because satan said you must bow to me by force he said everyone in hell bows to me and now jesus shows up and says satan you will bow to me you get the word that was happening here that's why the bible says he made a public show of them what drama was going on in hell follow me and when he the legal claims of justice i've explained to you the concept of justice if somebody steals in your house and you take the person to court what happened if they tell the person give him 30 lashes as they are lashing the person the the pain of that person is consoling you are you listening to me is that correct that's how because man offended the father it was the punishment of man that would appease him and jesus became that one so for every time they were oppressed there was a measure of justice that would appease the father's heart that's why nobody protected jesus until the legal claims of justice was full and he said all right the father's heart is appeased and jesus got up and made a public show the bible says you know what he made make a public show have you watched wrestling where the other party didn't even punch the person once that's what happened and then he went to satan watch this when he went to satan he said give me the keys which keys of joshua selman's life and destiny in the book of Revelation, he said, I am he that was dead, but now I'm alive and I hold the keys. You see that? When he said that, watch this, in him, every one of us stretched our hands by covenant and said, let me have my own too. And that of my father and my mother and my brother. This is what Paul saw by Revelation. Now he collected the keys. Follow me now. Psalm 24. When he, when he had the keys. No, don't open. We're out of time when he got the keys he was about to go out and suddenly there was a clarion call lift up your heads and be ye lifted oh ye ancient doors hold hold on those gates 
were living they were not dead those were the gates of hell he said i will build my church and the gates of hell those gates were the gates of hell because no man listen until that time ever was permitted to go condemned as a sinner and then come back again into the world to come and redeem men but here was this man he came and there was an announcement from heaven lift your head in other words gates open up somebody is about to leave hell and come back again and the gates ask a question they said who is this king of glory look at the words king of the glory that man left and then he said who is this king of glory and the voice said the lord why did he give him the attributes of a warrior he just conquered satan he said the lord strong and mighty and the gates asked again lift up your he said lift up your heads oh ye gates and be ye lifted oh ye ancient they had swallowed people nimrod ahaz different people followed that gate and he said there is a king that entered and wants to ride back said, who is this king he said the lord of hosts is his name suddenly the gates opened and jesus stepped in and the holy ghost hmm. because all this happened in the realm of the spirit on the third day suddenly the father said angels you can go and michael came and rolled the stone and sat and said let me see the person who will come and roll it back and the holy ghost came listen that's the work of the holy ghost now listen the physical body of jesus had been decaying there are you listening but when the holy ghost came because listen jesus the spirit body of jesus was now alive and now they needed a quickening if that same spirit that did whatever he did to that body now lives in you he said the exact same way he turned a mummy and removed every biological decomposition that same spirit and he came upon that body suddenly jesus was comfortable to enter his body when he entered his body he got up and he stepped out when he stepped out he stepped out in glory and the, the, the disciples were hiding and he stepped in watch this he the moment he resurrected he started manifesting the character of spirit beings walked through a war and he said all hail hmm. in other words job done when when mary saw him she wanted to touch him she said rabboni he said no don't touch me you will corrupt this thing I have not yet ascended to my father why because he would according to hebrews he would need to be the high priest remember that when he talks about atoning the word atone means to cover now in the jewish culture that you need to atone for the sins of the people using a lamb that was one year old and it was spotless now jesus became the lamb the problem is or the the advantage is that he doesn't have age so the age of the lamb determines the validity of the atonement now jesus became the lamb and poured the blood from that ageless lamb and he became the high priest again and carried the blood took it to the heavenly tabernacle poured it once upon the mercy seat and said all right priest and everybody your error ends we don't need you again suddenly he was able to step down and he said guys all hail he says all authority listen philippians chapter 2 happened before he came back that was where the coronation service happened immediately it was not when jesus left in the book of acts no he had become lord and then he came and said all hail all authority in heaven and on earth has now been given unto me he said you now go in that authority are you ex are you are you following me now so how does this apply to you now watch this the moment sam comes out for altar call watch this please and you confess the lordship of jesus over your life and you believe in his substitutionary work not just that he died for you but that you died in him say i died in him i was wounded in him i paid the price in him the moment you make that decision what happens this rope remember our good old rope again the very righteousness of jesus even if you were a drunkard right there with alcohol in your stomach listen you look exactly like jesus before the father and now jesus takes you as the mediator and says father
behold and the father said i cannot see a sinner all i'm seeing is somebody as exact as you we are now partakers of his divine nature this is your present day reality in christ now demons listen when you catch this revelation and you activate it the realm of the spirit will receive the signal that you know who you are are you listening to me and the seal of the blood is upon you and the proof that the deal was done is he sends the holy spirit to come into you whereby you cry abba father now you can call god my father you're not just a stranger somewhere are you listening to me now the holy ghost comes what happens when he comes you are blood washed you are redeemed if jesus christ comes are you going to go to heaven yes you will why the proof that you go to heaven is that you have the holy spirit any man that does not have the holy spirit in him cannot go to heaven hmm. are you listening to me now what you call eternal life look at me eternal life is not life after death eternal life is the presence of the holy spirit in a man he is the life of god the one who brings eternal life to you and then you are sealed with the blood so you have been an armed robber you have been a cheat you have been whatever you are this is why a lot of people cannot understand the message of righteousness because it looks like it's unfair how can you say i've been a, i've killed people i've done all kinds of things the moment i come to christ with a broken heart suddenly i become the righteousness of god in christ and he looks at you listen to what god says he says not guilty let me shock you do you know what not guilty means not guilty means you did not commit any sin come on god come on god when we say guilty but pardoned it means you fell are you listening to me and somebody has bailed you but now god says you are not guilty not guilty means whoever was on the cross was the person who committed that sin and now we see christ on the cross and he looks at you and says you are free lord i'm free i killed people i drank alcohol i did all kinds of things he says whatever you are saying i cannot see you again there is an eclipse of the blood between me and you and anything seen through the blood is holy that's why the holy spirit the spirit of holiness comes upon you so say i'm the righteousness of god now look at this now this guy is born again watch this sam is born again but he finds himself walking in a path that is ungodly assuming he finds himself fornicating again and this guy loves god he's born again he's praying in tongues and he finds himself what happened the bible says i write these things to you that ye sin not he said but if ye sin ye have an advocate with the father even jesus the righteous this is the hope of the believers listen to me that you are the righteousness of god and listen listen please i need you to get this when a believer falls or a believer commits acts of sin what happens has the person lost his salvation no no there are two conditions to lose salvation one is that you practice the sin of rebellion what is rebellion willful perpetual continual breaking of the laws of christ consciously if i'm here now and i'm preaching and i know i'm going to go and drink tomorrow i know it's wrong i plan it it's in my mind that's rebellion rebellion shifts you out of the covering of gra the grace of god and outside of his grace what you see is judgment are you listening to me so god is not some perfect god who is waiting and the moment i look at this person and i'm angry and i just slap his hey, hey, hey hell no if that's the condition nobody will go to heaven not even me look at the way i shout at you all the time and then i'm talking of going to heaven this is the revelation of a guilt-free life now watch this a lot of believers have carried this and said ah so if whatever i do so long as my conscience is clear and i can open up my heart and be repentant before god it means that i'm free that means i can go and sleep around with every lady in the world and suddenly just go to god and say lord you won't happen again please forgive me paul says shall we continue in sin that grace may abound but you see you're not going to stop when you preach and tell people stop sinning stop this if they could do it they will not do it in the first place there is an ability that you need to tap into are you listening to me it's called the redemptive grace of god so i've been bought with a price satan cannot look at me and remind me of my yesterday therefore if any man therefore if any sinner if any smoker 
if any malpractice practitioner be in Christ, what happens? He is. Only, it doesn't matter what happened in the past. Say, my past is past. Say it, my past is past. So that somebody does not come and tell you when you were four years old. Sam, your mother kept money at the back of this. You carried it. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Say, I'm a new creation. Say, I'm a new creation. So, why do you still feed on the word of God when you are a new creation? You feed on the word of God because now you need to renew your mind receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls you will need to renew your mind and come into the experiential reality of what christ has done watch this that's why you can see people say i am in christ and i am a new creation but what you see in their life you still see causes you still see causes you see them suffering the things that they are saying i am free from because it's not just confession alone are you listening to me confession must also follow an activation walking in the truth and walking in the reality of the word this is why we are teaching you the word otherwise there will be no need we can just stop and say there's no need to come to church again you are in christ go and you will suffer and as if christ did not die for you so we begin to teach you the principles and you begin to receive this the Bible says we are seated in Christ. Say, I'm, I'm seated with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. Rise up on your feet. Say, I have been crucified with Christ. My past is past. I'm a new creation in Christ. I love the Lord. The nature of sin is broken in my life. Guilt is broken in my life. Now look at me please let guilt end in your life right now there are many of you who have done things every time god wants to use you satan reminds you every time he reminds you of your few of your past remind him of his future hallelujah we have been called we have been redeemed i no longer belong to satan I'm not going to hell this is what it, there are many of you who are born again but you don't have what we call the assurance of salvation say i'm heaven bound because i'm in christ i'm confident of my position far above principalities far above powers and the bible says listen he said as he is right now so are we in this life as he is who is he a king so i'm a king the life that flows in him not when he walked upon the earth his present day reality i have the divine nature a life immune to sickness a life immune to failure that's why the bible says though the righteous fall seven times there is a nature that cannot leave him there he will surely rise again lift up your voice and pray. say i'm seated with christ seated with christ seated with Christ come on pray Christ died for me it's over with guilt I refuse to let the guilt of the past I am one with Christ I am one with Christ I am one with Christ hallelujah so listen when satan goes to your past he's supposed to see jesus there on the cross if satan is still seeing you it's because you don't have a revelation of what christ has done therefore if any man is in christ say i am in christ say i'm in christ hallelujah we have been raised up listen to me listen listen you have been raised up above the king in your village above the shrines in your village where they took your name are you listening to me above all of these things you are being raised up in your family there are things that can cause men everybody is dull in your family you are being raised up say i've been raised up say it again i've been raised up they say nobody can become a success in your place i've been raised up you are the only person who went to school i've been raised up 
you need to prophesy go ahead and prophesy in the realm of the spirit i'll be raised up i'll be raised up i may be from Kodi state but i'll be raised up i may be from kano i'll be raised up with christ raised up above curses above sickness above limitation where christ is today that is my present position I'll be raised up. I'll be raised up. I'll be raised up. I'll be raised up. Raised up. Above principalities. Above powers. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 We are rounding up. From today and for the rest of your life never allow anybody call you a failure are you listening to me stop calling yourself those names you have been raised up you have a new status a new class as he is today he has raised you this is what Ephesians tells us we are seated you may look like an non-entity but you are not ordinary say I'm not ordinary say I'm not ordinary Say I'm a champion. I'm a world changer. Yes. 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 Look at me. Look at me. So, when someone looks at Jimmy and says, Jimmy, you will be a failure. No, see. Stop crying over what people tell you. There are many of you that are so word sensitive. They say you are stupid. No, I'm not. Because Jesus is not. Say you are foolish. No, I'm not. As he is. They look at you. You see a carryover on the board. You say this is not my true status. No, no, no. They look at you and say, you, Seth. Eh? You, this girl. Will anybody marry you? Are you joking? Christ lives in me. See, package yourself today. And begin to walk in this consciousness. Refuse it. Listen, listen, listen. Refuse it. Refuse it. Jesus refused to let the mindset of Nazareth follow him. Because he was a world changer. Many of you are allowing the mindset and the limitations of your family to follow you. You are a young man, but you are behaving as if you are 60 years. Every time they say you are, you are always, it's not for us. They can't bless me. When you see blessings in the world, you laugh and say, my village, me, that my accent, I'm even sounding, when I speak, you know I come from this village. What is our business with that? The Bible says you are being raised up. When demons knock your door, they can't see you. You are above. Listen, something happened. Oyedeko was sitting in his parlor. And he was praying in tongues. Armed robbers entered and they were searching. They didn't see him. That's why demons, demons should not be able to find you. I tell you, you are seated with Christ. You are seated with Christ. You are seated with Christ. I like you to just imagine Jesus sitting and then he called you and said, come, 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 be seated with me. when he comes he comes with light for when he comes he comes with ease for when he comes he comes with illumination many of you have been praying oh lord take me to a new level it's not just by prayer stay in the presence stay in the glory that's the key that's the secret it's not just moving around no the glory doesn't just fall overnight when you stay your spirit man begins to acclimatize to the frequency of the spirit that's how it works it's not a hit and run thing you just rush and come out and then you want to hear with accuracy then you want his glory to flow it doesn't work like that there is a there is a staying there is a staying i tell you it's a law 
you must stay the church has learned to hurry God and we are hurrying the glory of God out of our lives there are many of you here listen when you started out with God you had the time and the staying power but I don't know what it is that has happened God is challenging us that secret place is now a strange place for many of us we are busy doing ministry we are busy trying to make a living we are busy trying to move around the church has lost the art of the secret place the secret place is not a place it's a place where you stay like a waiter stay until his glory comes and then when his glory comes there is a signature upon your life undeniable the secret place is the place of power the secret place is the place where you have a message if God does not sit upon you with his glory you have no message you can talk it's not about Rema it's about the presence that follows it you can preach all you can but there is a glory this is a testament of his visitation upon your life that's what creates impact that's what breaks chains I like you to pray and say Lord show me your glory greater levels of your glory please pray expose me to that realm superior dimensions of your glory I have tasted of your glory I have seen what your grace can do but Lord there is a desperation within my spirit to taste of something tangible Some of you will never recover from tonight's meeting. I tell you, you will not even know what is happening to you. It's an encounter. Listen, listen. If you're a man of God in this place, I submit to you. You are wasting the time of God's people if you cannot convey the presence to that atmosphere. Yeah. That's how habits are broken. That's how chains are broken. That's how impartations happen. It's not just by laying on of hands. How many people can you lay your hands on? Let the glory come and there is transformation. Let the glory come and something is happening in people. Let the glory come and testimonies, sicknesses. Many of you are sitting down right now and sicknesses will just disappear. No, it can't stand the glory. Prayer lives have been revived different dimensions of the spirit that's why the place is called koinonia it's not a place of discussion it's an atmosphere of encounter Lord, let nothing restrain your hand in the midst of your people. Let nothing restrain your hand. Don't rob God from finding a vessel in you. Don't rob God from finding a truly anointed vessel in you. See, let me tell you something. If you follow these rubbish people are doing of just visiting God's presence to come and receive breakthrough and prosperity and power and rush back, you will never find God that way. Please believe me when I tell you this. God is not an object you use. You see that? There are some of us 
our gifts are dormant for a very long time very long time that press in the spirit to activate you listen it's an anomaly when you remain in the same spiritual level for a very long time something is wrong and when you are rising it's obvious everybody knows that there is a transition some of us are in the same position for a very long time because we are giving God barely enough see that there are some of us our dreams have ceased our visions have ceased our encounters have ceased our passion for his glory has ceased listen every time the experience you used to have with God ceases something stopped it it never stops by default are we together now there are many of us you used to see things before they happen right now it has dried up out of nothing because you are trying to look for a wife or look for a husband hallelujah dry up there's nothing there again no power no grace all these things we keep making noise around within church one person falls down one person falls down and we jump around that's nonsense there are higher dimensions there are superior levels in the spirit beyond calling names and phone numbers there is the spirit not the gift of prophecy there is the very spirit of it the very operation of the prophetic realm where people receive testimonies of Jesus without you speaking any message the spirit of prophecy men live with encounters they cannot explain no matter how hardened you are when you come into this atmosphere something must surrender that's what happens when his presence comes you cannot change men by the excellency of persuasions no it doesn't work that way the presence that's what brings transformation the presence that's what brings change there's nothing mysterious about it it's only a price that very few desire to pay because we like things cheap we like things easy anything that commits us we do not want we want results but we hate process oh we want to be mightily used you want to stand and see the glory of God move around brother there is a price it's not a gift it's a reward it's a reward for diligence it's a reward for surrender it's a reward for total yieldedness I used to hear Benny Hinn say it total yieldedness that's the price for the anointing total yieldedness not half-hearted yieldedness how many musicians are here you have not brought one song from the spirit it's, it's, a, it's an indictment on your call it's an indictment of on your gift there are melodies in the spirit like waves but there is a frequency with which your spirit must rise to and then you will capture these things the the level of the sophistication of your spirit is the level to which you will capture many of us our prayer lives have died gone cold gone cold gone cold you only pray until you feel tired see let me tell you why many of us our prayer lives are not effective we are only praying to justify prayer you don't pray for the purpose of touching realities in the spirit you see that yes at, you can pray and then after one hour or two hours you can say I have tried that's a different you are only praying to be better than somebody else but there is a way you come with a desperation and you pray that your spirit will make contact if that contact happens in 10 minutes you end if that contact happens in five hours you continue see it's not about religion but it starts with a desperation a desperation a desire the first message the Lord is communicating tonight is let there be a revival in your spirit man get back those mantles and those gifts wherever you threw them let those dreams come alive again because in those dreams are the puzzles of your destiny a little here a little there 
before the year runs out, we're going to take a teaching on angels and the ministry of angels. You see, many of us have lost touch with spiritual reality. It's dangerous in this time and age to just move sensually. That the limit of your perception is a three-dimensional realm. You will be a victim of too many things. You've got to access a frequency that is higher than the material realm to supply you the strength and the illumination. Hallelujah. I challenge everyone here. There is more that God can do with your life if you will give him space. God is not a boyfriend. He's not a girlfriend. He's not looking for an affair. He wants a relationship. A very serious one. You give God an affair, you will get nothing out of it. If God is one of the many important things in your life, believe me, you will never find him. Believe me, you will never find him. Listen, listen. This desire is not for men of God. This desire is for everyone who wants God. Don't you think that this bias is for pastors? No, no. The spirit of man was designed to only find satisfaction in his presence. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't dry. Your presence is there. Just one more time. Your presence, Your presence is heaven. Is This is Koinonia. God bless you especially for our visitors and many who are coming for the first time. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now today our meeting will be very different. We are going to take, I'll respond to a few questions and answers. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit put it in my heart. There are so many of us that have questions about the Holy Spirit, about encounters, spiritual growth. Who give us an opportunity, maybe 30 minutes. And then I'll just minister to people. There are people who need to be ministered to. And so that's what we're going to do. Help us with another mic, please. Um, now I know that, please listen, many of us have questions, especially as regards intimacy, encounters, our spiritual lives. I'm trusting that God will grant grace. We'll use all the questions as a message and just communicate it and please i want you to feel free make sure that you ask questions that are applicable to our spiritual growth not just something that is a bias for some of us is something regards prayer your prayer life um your word life if there's no mic you can i can take one and then you can use this hallelujah so um because it's not only important to teach there are some of us who have encountered certain challenges maybe in the dispensing of the gift of the spirit in our lives or anything that has to do with the holy spirit and intimacy and our spiritual growth and i'm trusting that god will grant us um a few minutes that's deliverance happening to her 
something is leaving her that devil of darkness leave her right now in the name of Jesus Christ there's one other lady with this same situation right now in this place the power of God is coming upon her this is a spirit that has been tormenting her Lord wherever that lady is right now I declare deliverance by the power of the Holy Spirit that lady is in the congregation here in the name of Jesus Christ it's like fire that will come upon you I judge that spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ right now I decree judgment I pass a note of judgment to that wicked spirit that is bringing oppression praise the Lord so we're going to have a little Q&A and I'll respond and maybe uh, on one or two occasions we can allow one or two people to respond the questions will bless many of us because it will answer it will attempt to answer or solve some of the puzzles that are around our lives I don't want our spiritual lives to be um, without accuracy some of us may have been making the same mistake for a long time that's why we are not getting certain results spiritually hallelujah some of us may be pressing into God for instance there are people who press into God but necessarily they find out that they are always backsliding not that they are sleeping around or doing anything immoral but that staying power is like there is a spiritual meter every time you get to a dimension it pulls you back you are making progress but the graph is not straight it's like it goes up forces you down then you have to pray and fast your way there are many of us who do not know how to command strength in the spirit like a gentleman who uh, I think someone sent me a text I don't know if he's here he sent me a text in the afternoon um, and he said every time he's in the presence of God or anytime he's talking to people about the glory of God he starts yawning mysteriously like yawning and um, some of you are already nodding in agreement it's happening to me too what is the meaning of that <laughs> are you yawning out demons are you absorbing the glory what exactly is happening so um, please be smart don't be rude to the protocol people just walk as they direct you we're going to have a few questions um, I will use the questions some of the questions will actually culminate to teachings and I'll use the opportunity and just address things don't be biased make sure that you ask things that are relevant if your question is not relevant to our meeting we'll ignore it is that all right let's pray in one minute and say father speak to me go ahead and pray thank you jesus hallelujah praise the lord okay so um we'll come in threes we'll just have the first three they will stand and then if there's any need so let me see by wave of hands i'll point people out okay number one you can stand up come second number two and then um let's have a lady figure all right that lady waving her hands in blue come quickly appreciate them as they come be smart tell us your name straight to the point if you're wasting our time please we'll, we'll send you to your seats let me tell you in advance so you are not embarrassed go ahead turn to the congregation god bless you go ahead Good evening, sir. Is it working? Yes, sir. Um, good evening, sir. Thank you. Yes, Bless sir. you. Yes, sir. My question is um, about visions. Visions? Yes, sir. What, what are they? Visions. Okay. Yes, sir. What are they? And are visions a sign of spiritual growth? Okay. That's um, like spiritual visions. Are they limited to a particular set of people? People who do not have them as frequently. As, are they growing? Yes. Are they, is it a sign that they are growing? Okay. I, I want to. Visions are a dimension of supernatural encounters, right? Um, there are many levels, dimensions, and types of supernatural encounters. Visions are just um, a dimension of supernatural encounters that affords a person an opportunity to access realities in the spirit. It could be realities that reveal the past the present or the future you understand it could also be realities that expose that person to um, spiritual happenings 
Now, the whole goal of visions, and, and I want us to pay attention, the whole goal of visions and encounters, any supernatural encounter is prophetic in its dimension. Are we together now? So every time we talk of prophecy, it's not just speaking. Any encounter that exposes you to access any realm beyond the physical is a prophetic dimension. So in every man, there is a prophetic dimension. Let me call it a latent prophetic dimension. Now, those who are called into the prophetic or apostolic office, the advantage of the apostolic office is that on the strength of that office, you can walk, you should walk in all the fivefold offices because it's an administrative office. It heads and coordinates the spiritual activities. Are we together now? But in a typical prophetic office, by default, the moment you there is an election of grace upon you inclined towards that prophetic office there are it's like spiritual configurations by default are we together now now your spiritual life and your spiritual growth can add to it but anybody called into the prophetic office or any dimension of prophetic operations by default can be open to the realm of the spirit that's why you can find people seeing visions who are not born again are we together now remember he told jeremiah the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb i had already called you and ordained you to be a prophet are, are we clear now so visions and generally all supernatural encounters are a dimension of the prophetic and the goal of visions dreams is illumination and direction sometimes also impartation it gives you illumination access to light and information right sometimes it gives you direction but in many cases it also comes with impartation that's why some of us can have dreams have visions encounters we don't exactly know why they came but they leave residues of impartations as we get up and begin our normal life we see that certain possibilities in the spirit has been activated and we may not know at what point it was activated like wisdom like certain virtues do you understand so now but that does not mean listen if you are truly growing spiritually right even if you are not called into the prophetic dimension or prophetic realm if you are growing spiritually the the presence of god has a prophetic effect on everyone whether you're a prophet or not this is the reason why somebody on the strength of sheer intimacy with the holy spirit can access a level that will make him look like a prophet but in reality, he's not a prophet. He's just one who has pressed into God to an appreciable dimension. It's like an aura of God's presence. Now, the Bible does not use visions and dreams to qualify spiritual growth. Although experience has shown us that as you progress spiritually, you will begin to um, get impulses. It's called spiritual perception. In fact, I preached a message on that. You can get it with the media after the service. Are we, are we understanding now? Because there are some of us here who are praying, we love God, but aside from dreams and maybe what we call intuition, what people like Kenneth Hagin will call the knowing of the spirit, we've not had any supernatural encounter as it were. And sometimes we get intimidated. And I think I must correct that. Because some of us get intimidated because someone is now talking and saying... Um, um, Ogashe who saw something and he's prophesying and he's saying oh I saw something and you you are standing frustrated that you do not have visionary encounters in terms of um, encounters you are awake you are alive and you are caught up or a picture comes before you or the audible voice of God or some kind of supernatural encounters it does not mean you are not growing spiritually are we together now there are two spiritual indices to measure spiritual growth Number one is your degree of conformity into the image of the Christ. That's the first biblical sign of spiritual growth. So if you are born again and there is no transformation in you, you are not conforming to the image of Christ, believe me, your salvation is questionable. In fact, let me, let me press on this before we continue. There are many people who think they are born again. And, and please, I don't want you to doubt your salvation, but I must be sincere with you. There are many people who think they are born again. And I tell you the truth by the Lord, they are not. They are not saved. 
the meaning of that is if they die today they are going to hell are we together now please don't don't trivialize salvation salvation is the is the supplanting of the very life of god in a mortal man are we together the bible says you are born of the incorruptible seed remember of the word of god so there is a seed the same way a man plants a seed in his wife what do you expect that seed to do there should be fertilization is that true and eventually as time progresses that seed right begins to produce so you cannot tell me you are born again listen that you are born again the life of christ is in you and you are exposed to the atmosphere of the spirit and progressively we do not see after a prolonged period of time evidences of conformity to the image of christ something is wrong with that salvation are we together now so it's very very important so that's one index the second index is your degree of comprehension the degree to which you are having understanding on the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom so that your degree of conformity to what degree do i see christ in you in fact paul puts it this way he said my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you he was talking to people who were already saved so conformity to the image of christ and access to the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom these two will naturally produce empowerment impartation access to the anointing are we together now so that's it about vision god bless you yes sir i appreciate you sir sir i want to know well, what's your name my name is oko sampotens okay yes when um you there is a signal that an attack is coming on your spiritual life and you you pray against it but then actually you are going down spiritually sorry again you're going down spiritually your spiritual life you are going down spiritually yeah kind of you have an attack is coming on your spiritual life and then you attack from hell construct your question pray, very logical so that pray, prayer life, life for instance is your going prayer down life is going down yes and then you you pray you pray against it then a time comes that what the very incidents that causes you to go down finally happens although you prayed against it and it, it happens to um you you feel that okay you failed and then the spirit comes to um encourage you that as if it's it, it is it was proposed by god okay so what is the question so now? my question now is uh, when are, are those attacks actually and after the attack you grow higher are those attacks actually um ingredients to for you to grow spiritually to live you the level it, you are you mean a demonic attack uh, on your spiritual life for instance okay um his, his question has many sides to it i'm not getting exactly what he's asking but if i understand you well you mean your prayer life is going down yes are we together yes and then what happens there is a there, there is even a, there is a knowing in you that there, there that, is an attack yes a demonic attack on yes, your life yes okay and then for instance there is maybe a habit god has delivered you from and then there is a knowing that um it's coming back or something the devil wants to bring and it you back. pray yeah. and you pray against it let it not be let it not be and lord then it still and then it happens okay. then you feel like it's man it's gone then there is an encouragement that as if this thing is proposed and then after that you feel a lifting higher okay i think i get what you're saying no 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 it's not a habit is not proposed to lift you up spiritually what you see is an interplay of your carelessness and the mercy of god and the grace of god there are many things interwoven so you don't justify that because you grew from it it meant god brought it now we must understand that there are different attributes of god that um it is part of the love of god now love in the spirit is not affection love in the spirit is a realm with many dimensions there is a dimension of love called discipline there is a dimension of love called judgment there is a dimension of love called mercy there is a dimension of love called justice are we together that's why paul says to know the length the breadth and he he gives love a dimension so when we say the love of god comes to you it can come as his goodness it can, can come as his chastisement are we together it can come as his mercy now you are a believer number one we have to examine what made your prayer life to go down 
right there are two reasons why your prayer life can go down number one it can be the natural fatigue that comes from the spirit and the flesh contending together according to galatians chapter 5 verse 16 it says this i say then walk ye in the spirit and you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh right so it says the flesh lost it after the spirit the spirit after the flesh and there is a contention you get up in the morning i mean there are ladies to resist there is beer to cast away there, there are all kinds of things to happen there is bribery and corruption to run away from at the end of it after a while it's like it's like wear and tear your spirit can be fatigued that's not backsliding that's simply a tiring because of your faculties that help you interact with the spirit at that point the solution is a retreat isaiah 40 verse 31 even the young men can be weary they can faint all right then but they that wait upon the lord but in a situation where it is an attack which often happens there are three seasons where satan attacks people number one at the birthing of something new the moment there is something new about to happen in your life part of the many events that happen is a strange attack that has nothing to do with your spiritual life you read the bible and you find out it's not unusual right very very important there is always a strange attack revelations i saw a mystery a woman who was carrying a man child about to give birth to that child and a dragon came and stood waiting for the child to come so that she will eat now satan tries to stop you at the time of sowing your seeds any kind of seed spiritual seed if he cannot stop it he will try to stop the gestation period by bringing impatience taking advantage of your human nature that hope deferred makes the heart weary are we together now and if you cannot stop it then he will wait for you at the point of harvest so that he will abort the harvest these are the three seasons and stages of satan's attack so before you start ministry look at that he did it to moses stage one when moses was about to be birthed and conceived they wanted to kill all the people so to abort the destiny from day one now that it did not happen he wanted to implicate moses and he caused moses to kill somebody so that it will affect him the process and then eventually towards the end of his life he used anger and stopped him from entering so there are three stages of satan's attack are we together we see that even in the life of jesus jesus about to be born his star shines in the east wise men follow him herod wants to kill him are we together then later on again we see that through the process after his baptism satan comes to wait for him and then he tries to jeopardize his destiny by telling him i'll give you the kingdom bow down and since he refused and then he tried and tried and tried all through the lifetime of jesus satan could not get him and then the last stage was in hell when jesus was preparing to defeat all the cohorts of hell and come out all the demons and the principalities were on him to force him to bow and then he rose up and you know that when jesus was about to resurrect what happened they paid some people to lie even when he resurrected he, they guarded the place and when he resurrected they paid some people they said go and lie that the disciples came and stole his body so we see that there are seasons you can actually discern seasons where you know you are liable to attacks except you do not have spiritual intelligence now satan i'm using this are, are we getting blessed is god speaking to us satan is not omniscient there are three attributes that make god sovereign number one is his omnipresence his ability to be everywhere satan is not everywhere job 1 verse 1 from whence comest thou later on you read from running to and fro god doesn't run to and fro his eyes can see everything the all-seeing eyes of god are we together now number two his omniscience his ability to know all things satan does not know all things he works with informations that's why he uses human agents to probe into people that's why satan pursued prophets because he wanted to hear what god was telling them are we together now very important and then number three his omnipotence his ability to have all power once have i spoken twice have we heard that all power belongs to the lord now satan does not have these attributes are we together 
So Satan can discern seasons of breakthrough in your life. And that season is usually communicated in the spirit by unusual angelic activities. Satan was once a cherub. And so he understands. Remember when Jacob slept, right? When you read Genesis 28. When Jacob slept, he saw a ladder. There were unusual activities happening. Are we together now? The same thing Jesus told Nathaniel in John chapter 1. He said, you will see many things. You see the heavens open and all of that. So what happens is that at a point where the devil sees that there are unusual activities or prophecy has revealed what God is about to do. That's why when prophecy comes, that's not the time to cross your leg. Paul spoke to his son Timothy. He said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare with the prophecies. Because prophecy is an announcement. It's an unveiling. The moment the voice of God prophetically spoke, John said, behold the lamb. And a voice said, this is my beloved son. Satan started chasing him. Are we together now? So when there is an attack, it usually is that God is, is trying to do something in your life and Satan is trying to raise a counter-attack. At that point, if you understand the mysteries of the kingdom, there is a secret to tap into a higher supply of grace. Are you following me now? And that's the power of a retreat. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. They that wait. The moment you sense that there is a lot of boisterous activities in your life, and you will know it by the intuition of the spirit, some of you will see it in dreams. Some of you will have it in visions. Some of you prophecies will come to you. And many of us who are used to rejecting prophecy. Now, prophecy must not be exalted above the word of God. However, it's important to many times pay attention to it. Especially when it's coming from vessels that know God and are credible. It's important to pay attention. Praise the Lord. Very, very important. So, when there is an attack and it is a demonic attack... If it prevails over you, an attack is inevitable on the saints. And it's not a surprising thing. The surprise, however, is when Satan prevails. Are we together now? Because even in heaven, there was war. The Bible said there was war in heaven. That, that dragon, Lucifer, he rose. An archangel, Michael, also rose. But Satan prevailed not. There was no place found for him and he was casted to the earth. And there was a lamentation. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, you know. Satan, that old serpent, he has come with anger and great fury. Are we together now? So if there is an attack, an affliction, the secret is prayer. And it's in a secret place. So if your prayer life died, it's because you did not build momentum before that time. Are we together? That's the reason why it is important for every believer to have what we call, it's like a spiritual bank. It's like an energy bank. So your daily prayer, the Bible says redeeming the time. That's the mystery. There are two words that are used time in the Greek. There is chronos and there is kairos. Chronos is the passage of time. Kairos is an opportune time or a set time. The Bible uses these two words in the book of Psalms. It said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time, chronos, to favor her. Yea, the kairos. When you translate it to Hebrew, the set time. Are we together now? So, there is a set time, an opportune time, where major things happen between heaven. There is serious business between you and heaven. And at that time, the devil knows and he will launch attacks. So, what you do is you build a spiritual fortification, both spiritual intelligence and capacity in the place of prayer. So that at such time, it will sustain you. The Bible says, if you turn aside in the day of battle, what was wrong? Your strength, your spiritual strength now is small. So if you fell in that attack, it's because your strength was small. Are we together? Let's assume, let's use something, maybe pornography. Are we together now? And it's something God had delivered you from. And you sense that the devil is trying to drive you again into porn, uh, pornography. Pornography. Are we together now? And then you fell to it. That falling is not a test. That falling is not the furnace of affliction we are talking about. That you fell simply because your spirit did not sustain the strength and the energy to scale through. But then in the midst of it, the dimension of God's love called mercy comes in. 
So don't confuse it that because you learn more from that situation, it means it was God that orchestrated it. God simply took advantage of it and allowed his mercy to prevail so that in your rising, you will now rise better, stronger, and more anointed. This is what makes God love. Are you getting it now? But that does not mean God intended for you to necessarily fall. The falling is simply the limitation of your spirit man. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. Sorry. Uh, this is there are a, many people, if yeah. you ask two, two questions, please, if you come out after two questions, you will go and sit down and hope that somebody will ask your question. Are we together? Yeah, um, this has been happening. I will see some things. I, won't, I will not know how to inquire for the meaning. And when it happens later, sometimes they are not good. At times, it posi it's positive. You will what? Sorry. See, for instance. You will see things, yeah, yeah, visions now. Yes. Now, like, there was a time I saw myself traveling with a lady. And when it came, I didn't understand what it meant. When it came. You were traveling with a lady. Uh, to, a, a vision. To, to a place, yes. When it to came. Where? To a place. I didn't know we were going okay, to a place. Okay, No so location. The, okay. the reality was that the person was under attack and I was the one to lead her to the prayer place. I, I, I just, and that, that oh, was you where, held her and you were taking her yeah, to a place. Okay. That's where she got her this thing. But I didn't understand the meaning then. Now, recently. I saw a, a lady, my classmate, um, pick a bag and was traveling. I didn't know what it meant. The next day, uh, she actually told me she was, tra she was traveling to a place. I said, what for? She said, somebody just died there. Now, I understood that uh, maybe we were, if we had prayed about the journey and all of that, if it was a bad one. So, how does one, my question is, how would one be, uh, how would one know the meaning of the pictures you are seeing at the time of the vision to help your direction in prayers okay god bless you now there are two things here that our attempt to respond to I, I don't know if we understand his question but um after this we'll take three people from outside before we continue so protocol help us we'll get the three people from outside who have questions please you see how time is going if you come and you ask a question that doesn't make sense we have agreed as a congregation that we're sending you back please we intend to grow and we want to redeem the time are we together so please, before you come, make sure you are prepared not to disgrace yourself. Are we together? Ask questions. Seek counsel with your neighbor whether your question is constructive enough. Yes, yes, please. Please, so that you don't, you don't come out here and, and waste our time. But the gentleman was saying something that I consider to be important. Now, I think the biggest error in the prophetic is lack of spiritual growth to contend for accurate interpretation. The problem with the prophetic or visionary encounters usually, three of us can see the same thing in the spirit, but it does not mean the same for all three of us. Are we together? Now, that's the problem I have with books that say, if you see a chain, it means oppression. What if it's a chain watch that I saw? What if it's a, a necklace to mean an ornament of royalty? You can't just say, I saw a chain. It means I'm under attack. I remember a lady years ago who was pressing into God. And when she got to that dimension, she, she, a, another lady had a dream about her and saw her naked and came and met her and started lambasting her and said, you are walking in immorality. What kind of nonsense life is this? You are giving us an impression like you are serious with God. Now your secret has been revealed. And the lady was depressed and she came and met me. That, that nakedness was a message in the spirit that she was becoming intimate with the spirit. But it was wrongly interpreted. Three of us can see a finger in the spirit. For one, it means warning. Stop what you are doing. For another one, it means direction. Come up hither. Are we together? For another, it means I am blessing the works of your hands. We all saw the same thing. So it is wrong. Remember in the interpretation of the dream of, of, of Joseph, and the wine presser and baker, all of them saw three, three things. Three basket, three this. He interpreted for the first one and he was happy. Then the other one said, me too, I have my own. He said, in three days they will hang you. And this is established. And they hung him after three days. Are we together? So, stop going around with predefined prophetic interpretations. You only make certain prophetic interpretations predefined if the character of their operation has been established in the world. For instance, anywhere you see a dove is a representation of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Anywhere. It's a spiritual symbol that the Spirit of God has associated himself with. 
Except if you see a dove and you see it oscillating, that's, a, that's deception, for instance. Because according to the scriptures, the enemy can parade himself as an angel of light. Are we together now? So, it is true that there are certain default symbols that help us communicate with visionary encounters. But not just that you see, you can see a woman in the spirit. You can see yourself moving with a woman. And you may think that God is punishing you from lo or lost. A woman in the spirit is a gate. That woman you are seeing could be that you are entering a new season. Are you seeing now? But because you do not sustain that spiritual intelligence, you go around casting something you should be prophesying to come. And, and all of that. So I think um, for the gentleman, I think I've been able to help him. I, I hope that I got his question correctly. If I didn't, I'm, I'm so sorry. Praise God. Yes, my dear. Praise God. Permit me to say this that first. That it's an honor to finally meeting you after listening to your message for a very long time. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm very Thank happy you. I'm here tonight. You're my welcome. question is to Baruch too. The first question is, what do you do as a person when you're struggling with spiritual good? Today you are hope, tomorrow you are Spiritual you're growth. Uh, does it mean that? Um, it's like a graph that you'll be going zigzag, zigzag till you get to that final slope. Uh, or okay. is it that you question just... Question two. The second question is, you're talking about dream and vision. In my lodge, we had a case where someone said he had a dream, blah, 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 blah. And it's really caused a big advoct in my lodge. Look at the congregation. Okay. It's, it's really caused a big advoct in my lodge. I'm asking the question that... He had a dream about the lodge or something? About the sister, that the sister came to seduce him, blah, blah, blah. And everybody was now calling the sister a witch. That as does it mean that all dreams comes from God? Okay. When we see dreams, does it mean that everything is, we see it is coming from God? Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you, my dear. Um, her first question was: Sometimes they should not go immediately so that they can remind me in case I've lost. Um, I'm interpreting them with my spirit, so my mind is hardly here. Um, her first question was what? <laughs> up, up, and down. Okay. Okay, listen, listen, listen. Listen, please. What does the Bible say? The path of the just is like a shining light that does what? Shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. Now, there is a difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding. I think I've, I've, cleared, I've cleared that. All right? For as long as you are wearing this body, the limitations of carrying up mortality, right? The concept of immortality is a concept that is accessible. But immortality is not an impartation. Immortality is the resultant effect of accessing light from the spirit. Because the Bible says, as we behold him, we are changed. Now, the problem usually is that our lifetime and our level of regeneration is so slow that our lifetime will not be able to help us change that fast. That's why we die. Are we together now? But it is possible that a man can contend for that dimension. Enoch did it. Elijah did it. So we know that it's possible to live bodily, although in a glorified form, out of this earth. Moses didn't do it um, and all of that. But at least we have two witnesses, two evidences in the Bible that they were able to access that. So when you find yourself... See, and, and this is... Her question is very instrumental to your spiritual health. If you are sick and you don't know, how many of you have seen people in the village who are sick, they don't even know? To them, they are healthy. You just test them and say, Mr. Man, you have malaria plus plus. And yet, the person is playing football. You not, now tell the person, go to the hospital. That's how many people are spiritually. And for me, your spiritual life is tested based on your passion for God. There are certain things that start happening in your life that you know there is danger. Number one, your prayer life. Your, when your prayer life is, is nose diving, don't ever pretend that it's a dimension of growth. You are backsliding. Immediately, once your prayer life is going down, don't let Satan fool you and say you are just in a season where uh, God doesn't want you to say anything or this and that and that. Be very careful because it could be deception to destroy you. Your spiritual life. Number two, your passion for the word. Number three, your passion for the house of God. Number four, I want to call it your, your sense of morality. It's important. If all of a sudden I sit down and I find out that I start 
lusting after you. Call me apostle, call me whatever. I'm lusting after you. I came for Koinonia, I saw you. Abel is preaching, Cain is there, disturbing his mind. What do you think I'll do? It will be stupid for me to wear suit again and come back. I will use the week to flog out that element of the flesh that is growing. Many of us ignore those promptings until it grows to a point where it backfires obviously. That's when we start crashing in. The See, the Bible says, let sin have no place. Don't give the devil a foothold. The moment you find out that there is a place, there, is, there are certain things you are bending on your values. You don't pray for three days or four days. You feel all right. Very, very all right. You carry your Bible and there is no zeal to read. Sometimes it could be in the presence of God, you'll be able to find out whether it's spiritual fatigue or it is backsliding. Are we together? But ultimately, the difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding is that under spiritual fatigue, your passion is still there. It's just the zeal and the strength to press to that is not there. But under backsliding, your zeal and your passion dies. Are, are we together now? For the, our brother that saw a vision that a lady is seducing him, um, that's, that's wrong. You see, this, this is the problem we have when we live in Christian communities because people wake up with all kinds of things. I spoke to you about interpretation. This brother may be a sincere person. Maybe he's here. We are not creating fight. Are, are we together? You don't know whether he followed you for Koinonia. You said he's in your lodge. Now, the point is this. It is wrong. You see, prophecy and in the realm of and the realm of the spirit also depends on your mental renewal for correct interpretation are we together i can guarantee you that this brother's spiritual paradigm fundamentally is faulty for him to see an innocent lady and call her a witch to say is he the only person in the lodge you'll be surprised it's not even maybe the most handsome or something so um it's, it's a wrong paradigm now you point do you know another thing? It is possible that I can go to bed and see Shalhoma chasing me, maybe with a stick in a dream. Are we together now? And all of a sudden, I wake up and I say, I saw Shalhoma chasing me. And it's welfare that cooks for me. I put two and two together and I say, my life is under, I'm in danger. I mean, and then I now dissolve koinonia welfare. Because they are trying to destroy Apostle Joshua Selman. Some of you, you have that paradigm. Now, it can happen. A possibility exists that such kinds of things happen. I mean, in the house of God, there are all kinds of things. But then I'm saying that your interpretation primarily should not be that because he saw a lady. If he does not understand, seek counsel. There are, there are spiritual puzzles that we put together. You must let scripture interpret your encounters. Are we together now? I mean, in the Bible, women seduce men. What was the progression of the seduction? Samson was seduced. Are we together? Who again was seduced in the Bible? Huh? Job was not seduced. Who? Joseph was seduced. Some of you are saying, Job, look at how your poor Bible, please, how about this is Koinonia, don't were Bible people. Job was never seduced. The only woman with him was his wife. Please don't go and say that anywhere. It's very bad. Are we together now, my dear? So, that, that, that teaching, even if it was true, this is what I would have done. If I had a dream and you pursue me, or you are trying to sleep with me or something in a dream, right? Even if it was your face, it's wrong to get up and call you a witch. Do you know, because you don't know what spiritual challenges he's facing. You now get up and you now call her a witch. Three situations would help to interpret that. Number one, it could be that there is a spiritual operation around your life and your family that births seduction. It can be true. Are we together? That you as a person, you are not bad, but it's possible that you are being influenced by the spirit of lust or because of the background you are coming from. And so it will happen in the similitude of your face disturbing that person are we together now and so you will feel bad number two it can be the spirit of confusion the devil masquerading to now cause confusion are we together so he will now use your face 
Just like you saw your father quarreling you. You saw your mother caught beating you. You just got up and said, your mother is a with anybody, whether my father or my mother. I'm, the, the woman is innocent. You find out that we keep calling people witches and wizards who have no business with witchcraft. However, 80% of them are being influenced by spirits that operate in the character of what they were accused of. You see that? So, um, whoever he called a witch, I can guarantee you, is not a witch. Please, she left her father's house to also come and do NYC. She's not a witch. She may not be spiritually strong and all of that, but she's not a witch. It may be wrong. So, go and comfort her. The brother, what he saw, when you have encounters, you are not guaranteed to have interpretation for them. But one thing you can do is blast in tongues sufficiently until your spirit man gives you a note of peace. At that point, you know that whatever is the issue, whether calling it forth or driving it away, it has been settled. It is for that cause the Spirit of God makes intercession for us. I cannot tell you that every encounter I've had, I've had interpretation for. In fact, some of them may be years in the future. As I grow spiritually or I have other encounters that piece them up together, I now see the message. But in the interim, every time you wake up from an encounter, praying in the spirit is the way forward and you pray until there is that check in your spirit that whatever it is it's been settled you understand so that's what you should do god bless you and increase you eh? okay yes, straight sir. to the point um we have okay let's have one or two more people two more people please if you are sure your question is really going to bless us we have a little time and do, please and please don't ask anything here that will waste our time. Are we together? The gentleman, uh, if your questions will be fast, I can listen to it and combine it. That gentleman, there's a lady in the background. You, sister, the one waving your hands, come. Um, have we had anybody outside? Okay, there's one person outside. Okay, one usher, come. You're a worker, we love you, come. Okay, so quickly. Good evening, sir. How are so you? process whereby... Don't look at me. As you are saying, look at the congregation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. In the presence whereby someone is suffering from the lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. Yes. Example. What is lust of the flesh? For Immorality. example, masturbation. Okay. Or lesbianism. And you are praying. Praying in tongues. Pray. You are in the presence of prayers. And you are still having the feelings. In the presence of praying, you, know, you are still struggling and struggling. You are trying to pray. The spirit is just trying and trying. So, sir, what do you What's do? the way forward? God bless you. Thank you. He's been very sincere. Look, let me tell you the truth. The goal of this question and answer session is to help us grow spiritually. There's nothing embarrassing about it. Praise God. There are people like that. In fact, I've seen people who are suffering from immorality or lust, and they're on three days dry. On the third day, before they break with food, are we together now? The devil does some kind of things, positions... The same lady they used to sleep with and it happens again or internet pornography or whatever we've seen these kinds of cases so um do you know what deliverance is deliverance is not just coughing out things and rolling around and pushing chairs and bringing people here deliverance is the spiritual mechanism with which a man is separated from a spirit or an influence over his life are we together now? There are three dimensions or three levels that access Satan in a man's life. Number one is called covenants. Covenants. It is usually the strongest of the three. Number two is disobedience or ignorance. Number two is ignorance. Then number three is disobedience. Now, the danger of covenant and ties is that your personal salvation does not take away the covenant that is in a territory. Are we together now? That is the reason why someone can be born again. There are still corrupt people in Nigeria. But are you corrupt? No. Are we together now? Nigeria is termed a corrupt nation. Yet there are righteous people who are true. Are we together now? The earth is the Lord. Yet they are still bombing children and disturbing people. So there are covenants. A covenant is a legal agreement between spirit entities and human beings or fellow human beings right that either opens up access for good or of evil covenants have consequences right 
they can they can they can transcend generations so this is very important that's why you find out that the classic sign of covenants is that there must be a pattern to it the moment there is a covenant involved in any process there is a pattern if these three guys are brothers and you find out that michael is very rich kenny is very rich promise is very rich you see that pattern there is a covenant that grant that access promise very poor kenny very poor michael struggling there is also a pattern so patterns are usually communications that the access point for the realm of the spirit in that situation is a covenant so you find out that a father is an arm robber when he stole his son did not know many years later the son will also come and steal have you seen people like that the same pattern that happened to their parents repeats themselves because the patterns are a spiritual formula there is an enchantment like a spell that makes it happen i know a lady who who i i, I think um, um she got pregnant and the person who got her pregnant i think was a man of god same thing happened to her mother same thing happened to her grandmother one reverend in their village got the grandmother pregnant many years later one one evangelist or something got the mother pregnant and then now one brother in a fellowship gets the lady pregnant. now that brother does not know the reverend that got uh, uh, um, grandma pregnant that time when she was young but then the truth remains that there is a pattern are, are we together are you getting it now and i know that sometimes many of us are preached into believing they don't exist and we try to explain them away but the truth is is there it can be dealt with potentially the birth of jesus gives us access to victory in this thing but there is the experience of establishing that victory are we together number two is ignorance 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 grants access to demon spirits they manipulate on the ignorance of men and open them up to certain tragic manifestations then number three is disobedience you know it but your capacity to walk thereof in that obedience is not there so these are the three access points so if you find out that you are praying praying and fasting about the issue of lust or immorality or any entanglement and it's repeating itself you need help that's the reason why god puts um gifts to the body to be able to help right remember our teaching for this course many are weak many are sick and many do sleep god has elected certain people in the body of christ and created platforms that can be able to help people deal with these things that's why we organize miracle services that's why we organize um, um all kinds of meetings that's why when we come to god's presence like this we take our time to soak in the glory so that the presence and the power of god can come and then address some of these things so for that brother you may need help seek help look for an anointed man of god not just a counselor somebody with an anointing that has been demonstrated to produce results and it can help you praise god praise the lord my name is luke my name is luke it's talking about the presence of god okay i heard of your message you preach about doers of the world okay and you mentioned i forgot the man name but you say pursue of the presence when we pursue how do one pursues the presence of god and how do we abide in that presence of god like in Psalm 91 verse 1, when it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Sometimes I may get interpretation of that verse, but sometimes the interpretation does not suit me. So I'm asking, that how do one, what, do, what are the criteria for one to dwell in the presence of God and remain constant in the presence of God? Okay. There are parameters. Number one, you must consistently create an atmosphere. You see, I preached a message years ago called The Law of Atmosphere everything thrives based on the atmosphere created the presence of god requires an atmosphere the presence of god is invoked just like you invoke spirits there is an atmosphere that allows the presence of god to be made manifest are we together now worship is one key that opens up the presence of god your passion your love towards god in other words you're prioritizing him making him your one and only and ultimate is one way to get the presence of God. Obedience in scripture. He that keepeth my commands. John um, um, 16, 21. I think I'm right. Or 14, 21. He that keepeth my commands. He it is that loves me. 
and I will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him. So the love of God is very, very important. Yes, my dear. Praise God. I'm precious, Moses. Um, I want to ask, uh, um, there's this friend of mine that I was preaching to and um, she was telling me that there's no heaven, that we are going to stay here. There's no there's, heaven? Yes, and there's no hell. Uh, okay. So, now we're getting into I've, denominational. And, okay. Um, she was not, I was not telling her there is the no story heaven. of uh, Lazarus and the rich man. I now asked her that, okay, where did Lazarus went to and where was the rich man? Then she asked me to open to Revelation 21 verse 1. And after much argument, she was now asking me that, in Revelation 21, he said, and I saw a new heaven a coming new down ahead. And you know, she was now asking me that, okay, where is that new heaven and the new earth? And I didn't know what to really tell. I just kept quiet. I was confused in that aspect. God bless you. Um, I don't know if it's the millennial reign of Christ or... I understand. I don't really... You see... We labor day and night uh, contributing our quota to help believers become matured. Are we together? You make people become matured by giving them understanding. Now, before I answer, I, I don't mean in any way, I know that there are different denominations, different Christian sects with their understandings about heaven and all of that. And um, I'm not giving you a denominational opinion. Are we together now? There are many instances in scripture that lets us know that there is heaven. Are we together now? Very, very important. I, I think that um, it doesn't make sense to begin to make all those arguments. Genesis 1 verse 1. The very first verse in the Bible. In the beginning, God created what? And the earth. Now, I, I think that alone answers. First verse, first chapter in the whole Bible. In the beginning, God created. So, don't say where is it. Created, God created the heavens. And notice he never said the heaven. Heavens, different planes. Paul himself gave us an example. He said he was caught up to the third heaven. That means there are other dimensions. The psalmist said the heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord. So, we know that there are different planes, but there is heaven. Hallelujah. Are we together now? The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Not just the sky. Are we together now? Acts chapter 1, when Jesus was about to be taken, when he lifted to heaven, two angels appeared and told the people, men and brethren, why look ye? You know, this and that and that. He said, this same Jesus. Is it not there? Acts chapter 1. Let's use it to answer. At least let's use the words of Jesus. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus is going to heaven now. And he's speaking to us. Or the angels are responding. Acts chapter 1. I, I don't want to quote it wrongly. Verse, verse 10. Verse 10. I know that when you read from verse 9. Let's start from verse 9. It gives us an impression like he just vanished. He did not just vanish. A cloud received him. A cloud received him. And when he had spoken these things. While they beheld. He was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10, please, quickly. And while they looked steadfastly towards where? Heaven. As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Verse, verse 11. Which he also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into where? Into where? So we know that heaven is the habitation. The heaven of heavens is where Jesus himself lives. There is a place, a spiritual location called heaven. It says, shall also come in like manner as ye have seen him go into where? Heaven. Are we together? So that issue of saying um, there is no heaven is not true. Please, the Bible does not negate that. The fact that there is heaven. The Bible clearly tells us in many instances. Old and New Testament. That there is heaven. Jesus himself. I want to give you the ultimate proof now. Jesus himself made us to know that there is heaven. In Matthew chapter 6. When he was teaching us how to pray. He said our father. 
who art where. He didn't say our father who art around. Our father who art in an exact location, heaven. From that point, we hallow your name. Your kingdom come. So please, let's rest this issue once and for all. There is a real place called heaven. And, and um, there are people there right now. Are we together? And we hope that one day we'll join them. Now, what we need to explain is the fact that the Bible says the old heaven and the old earth will be rolled away like a curtain and then a new heaven and a new earth will come. It is true that that very habitation of God will eventually be transported back to this realm. But it won't be in the similitude of these three dimensions. So it's not like we're going to have another three-dimensional realm. No. There will be another atmosphere that comes to occupy this space. This is the sovereignty of God. This is part of the mysteries of the kingdom. Where this whole heaven and all earth will be rolled away to, frankly speaking, we don't know. The Bible does not reveal that. Uh, this is part of the information that is contained in the age to come. Are we together now? That's why there are ages to come that carry certain informations that are important for the saints. So there is heaven, my dear. And every time you preach to people and they argue with you, don't turn your evangelism into debate politely decline you may look foolish don't say no i can't let this go like this let it go like that so that god will be glorified yes my dear praise the lord my name is christiana kaduri thank you my question is sir like somebody prophesied to you you're going to marry a man of god and you have been waiting <laughs> okay many ladies are happy Okay, let, let's get the question, please. And Someone prophesied to you. And nobody. And said you will marry a pastor. Yes. And you have been waiting. And the person has been waiting because one miracle service, I saw you, sir, you prophesied to one lady that she's going to marry a pastor. And one day again, I'm listening to one man of God. He was saying, anybody that prophesied, if he's a man of God, that the thing did not happen, continue waiting. Even when you die waiting, continue waiting. So, <laughs> am I think that too. When somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a pastor, and the pastor is not coming, you continue waiting on what okay. to do. That's a very good question, I think. We can use it. It's not just prophesying about marriage. It could be about anything. Praise the Lord. Now, um, I, I understand what she's saying, and she's communicating probably the pain of a lot of people. Because over time, women of God have spoken to people, and there are times that for others, the prophecy have even come with precise detail. You are going to marry a man called uh, Ebenezer. He's in media department. The day you will see him is wearing a white cloth, dark trouser. He's holding a camera. If he snaps you, just know. <laughs> now, come Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer. Come now, Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer, you now come for Koinonia. And Ebenezer is just snapping around and focuses on you. And your heart is beating. It's true. Ebenezer snaps you and goes to marry somebody else. Are we together now? And now you are waiting and you are frustrated. Now, there are three things here I want to explain. I know we have all laughed, but let's listen closely now. The Bible says that even the ministration of the gifts must be done according to the measure of grace. Are we together? Two of us can be prophets, but the grace, the access to authority and strength, the spiritual ranking that authorizes us in the dispensing is like you have two doctors. One is just doing his housemanship, another one is doing, another one is a consultant. They are all called doctors, but are they the same? They are not the same at all. Are we together now? This is how it is spiritually. So, when, we, when there is the ministration of the word, notice sometimes when you see me wanting to talk to people, I call people out by the spirit and I just keep quiet. Because of what the Lord is communicating to me, sometimes it's like a feedback mechanism. I'm checking in my spirit to make sure that this is not an interplay of the flesh and to also make sure if God wants me to reveal it to them. Sometimes you see me and I talk to people. I take away the mic because the information is very sensitive and may, is something that can be embarrassing. Are we together now? 
but let me tell you sincerely let me tell you this sincerely one thing i know about marriage and we have discussed that make reference to my message um challenging discussions on late marriage i think we touched that area where the issue of god said overrides the word of god the bible tells us hebrews chapter 1 god who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets has in this last day spoken to us through his son which he has appointed to be heir over all things and we know that that son is the living logos the word of god and so whether it is joshua selman i'm not telling you to doubt the word by the grace of god we press into the word of god to make sure that we bring accurate words and there is a track record you can follow up the things that have been prophesied over people some of them have come to pass. Some of them are already on the way. Praise the Lord. Now, um, no matter what it is, if a man of God gives you a prophetic word, and after a season, you do not, for instance, let's use marriage. I prophesy to this lady now, and I tell her, a pastor is coming. And Michael comes to her. And let's assume Michael is just a businessman. You know that the natural tendency is for her to drive him away. And say please you are not a pastor um he may be a pastor when he marries her god didn't lie are we together but sometimes it can also be that there is need for a check in fact sincerely speaking let me tell you it is very it is very praiseworthy to go back to god again we have seen instances in the bible where God spoke and under certain circumstances he had to speak new things again are we together an example is Isaiah 38 when he spoke to Isaiah to speak to Hezekiah remember that scripture he came and told him Hezekiah put your house in order you will not recover from this sickness you are going to die are we Bible students so when I Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and invoked the mercy of God God sent Isaiah again are we together to go back so there is a possibility it's not a doctrine but through scripture we see that there is a possibility um the alignment of man can make god say new things i'll give you an instance if this lady is your wife are we to um, example example if this lady is your wife i'm not showing you your wife if this lady is your wife oh, of course let me just put a, a little word of blessing we are proud of our ladies and if i say it and god is is is, is directing you there there's nothing wrong ladies you should give me a happy meal tomorrow <laughs> are we together but now this is the example if this is your wife truly truly and she says i'm not doing do you think god is going to yoke you and tell you you will not marry any anybody again because of her carelessness and disobedience are we together now god will not put you to ransom the same way if god calls you into ministry and you say no will he force you will he kill you the same way he, he tells you that you should surrender all to him when you refuse he will not force you there's hellfire already to settle that issue so he will not force you please i want us to understand that the plans of God can change. It's his purposes that are eternal. This is a revelation that will deliver many of us right now. The plans of God can change. God planned that you fly Ari to Lagos. And something happens. God will tell you to enter if it's in a cheap transport. The plans have changed. But the destination is still Lagos. But when you sit down and say it must be Ari or it must be flight... Are we together now? In scripture, again and again. For instance, do you know it was never God's desire for men to have earthly kings rule over them? When you read in the Bible, it was his desire that he remains their king. But the people out of anger and rebellion, they say, give us a king. And God had to make prophet Samuel to go and anoint Saul, the son of Kish, to become a king. Are we together now? Yes. It was never even God's desire. Listen, it was never God's desire for David, for the tribe of David to be the lineage with which Jesus will come. It was supposed to be Saul. Are we together? 
but Saul made a costly mistake that costed him that opportunity. Remember when he went and he was off, um, giving the offering by himself. They asked him to wait for the coming of the prophet, but he could not wait because the people were murmuring. And being a king, he was not a priest. Are we together? Because in ancient times, there were kings, priests, and prophets. They operated in different dimensions. Occasionally, the priests were also the prophets, like we have in the case of Samuel. He was both a priest and a prophet. Are we together now? And so in that incidence, um, Saul now start, he made sacrifices. And while he finished, Samuel just came. And Samuel told him, you have done foolishly. He said, if you had waited for me to come and offer the sacrifice, God would have established your throne forever. So it would not be the lion of the tribe of, or, or the, the root of David. It would now be the root of Saul. Again, we see that the first person God called in the Bible was not Abraham. The first person God called in the Bible was his father, Terah. Terah was tired and he said, I'm not doing. And then God looked for Abraham. Are we together now? So that's very, very important. I think that um, we need to understand this. My, my dear, if, even if it's me that prophesied to you and you are tired, come and meet me. Come for counseling. And say, let's, let's hear God. Let's pray about this issue again. Especially where there is a God-fearing, very serious and responsible brother who is ready to marry. And is coming around you. You are hanging the person while waiting for the pastor to see if the pastor will come or not. Don't dilly-dally. Find the man of God. If the person who prophesied to you is still within reach, find him. If you discern pride and arrogance in him that he's embarrassed to recheck whether his hearing was correct, go and look for another man of God to speak to you. Are we together now? I know there's a lady who came one time, I think from Port Harcourt, coming to confirm because a man of God described somebody, a fair person, and she had been waiting. And there was somebody who really loved God. When she came, I prayed for her and I said, I, I wish you a happy married life. And they are married now, happily married to the glory of God. She would have been waiting forever for, for a, a yellow person to appear. So, praise the Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, all these questions we have attempted reveal three things. Number one, it is costly to be ignorant over spiritual things. Are we together? It is costly. Just a little question and answer session, but it has exposed us to a lot of things. It is costly. I trust that with this little question and answer session, it has activated our appetite for more of God. You see, if you do not understand scripture, you will be deceived in many ways. You notice that every question I attempt to answer, I show you a scripture to support it because you cannot afford to answer questions with opinions and you will not know God's opinion if you don't study. Study. Study to show yourself, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word. Praise the Lord. Psalms 82 from verse 5 says, They know not, neither will they understand. He said they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course. So it is important for us to be good students of the word. Not religiously studying it, but studying it with everything that we have. Hallelujah. Number two, corporate fellowship is very important. It's part of the principles and the requirement for your spiritual growth. You can see that a platform like this has afforded us an opportunity to know more and to learn a few things to strengthen our spiritual life. Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that comes from the head of Aaron, right? Down to his bird and to his cat and all of that. He said, dear, God had commanded the blessing. So it's very important. Corporate fellowship is important for our spiritual strengthening. Hallelujah. And then number three, ultimately, it reveals to us the necessity of the person of the Holy Spirit. Worship team sang the song beautifully. We're going to sing that song again. And, and then we'll sing that song that came. I can't even remember what we sang, but try to remember it, worship team. We'll sing those two songs again very beautifully. The Holy Spirit. 
This place is called Koinonia. It's our intimacy with him and our partnership with him that affords us the opportunity to access light and access his wisdom. The Bible says, ride prosperously because of truth. Right? You will only prevail by the truth you know, not the truth that is available, the truth you know. It can be available, but if you do not know it, you will still die. There are still people going to hell, whereas the price for our sin has been paid for. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Um, just a few minutes and we'll be done. We are going to pray and ask the Lord very passionately, very passionately to open up our spirits. To open up our spirits. Very, very important. While seated, just pray. We are going to stand up, but then I want us to pray while seated and talk to the Lord. Some of us have seen this situation has revealed to some of us how clueless we are over spiritual things. If you were to be asked some of these questions, many of us see that this is like a, a test. Those outside, make sure you are praying at the back there, outside at the window. Make sure you are participating in the prayer. The Lord is with you right where you are. Make sure you are praying and say, Lord, please deliver me from spiritual ignorance. Deliver me from ignorance. Grant me access to the word. Grant me access to the word. Deliver me from spiritual ignorance. Lord, I want to be furnished, grounded in the truth. The Bible says that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and, and evangelists and pastors and teachers. It says for the equipping of the saints. The equipping of the saints. That they the saints now equipped will do the work of the ministry. To the end that we all will come into the fullness of the, the, the measure of the stature of Christ. Not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Lift your voice and pray. And say Lord in this time and age, in these end times where there is a lot of error, there is a lot of confusion. I pray that I be delivered from spiritual ignorance. Lift your voice and pray. Deliver me, O oh God, from ignorance. Open my eyes to access light in the spirit. Deliver me, O oh God, from spiritual ignorance. Pray. Make sure you are praying. Deliver me, O oh God, from spiritual ignorance. It's dangerous in these days not to lack the knowledge that you need. Number two, Lord, align my spirit in a way that I'll begin to touch realities in the realm of the spirit. Lift your voice and pray. Let there be a programming in my spirit. Let there be an alignment in my spirit, man. Have your way. I'm tired of wrong interpretation. I'm tired of interpreting spiritual realities in a wrong way. 
I'm tired of reading my Bible and not accessing the light and the power that I need. Pray. Align my spirit. I cry for an alignment upon my spirit, man. Have your way. Have your way. please rise as we pray this very prayer point is important oh god if ever you need a vessel find one in me lift your voice and pray use me oh god many of us have stopped praying that prayer use me for your glory lift your voice and pray lord use me use me use me i may not be a man of god but make me a mighty vessel in your hand Oh yes, have your way in my life. Have your way in my life. Use me for your glory. As an agent of deliverance. As an agent of transformation. As an agent of healings. Miracles, signs, wonders. Use me in the prophetic, oh God. Use me in the apostolic, oh God. Use me in the healing ministry. Take your place, take your place, take your place. Hey. Holy God, take your place, take your place, take your place. Holy For your glory, use me for your glory, use me for your glory. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way. Holy 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 Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I like us to pray any gift of the spirit, any dimension that once walked in you. But for some reason has stopped working i like you to pray and say lord revival let there be a restoration lift your voice and pray i used to have dreams but the dreams have disappeared lord let it come back i used to have encounters i used to have ministration of angels oh god my prophetic dimension was sharper than this Something has happened. Lift your voice and pray. Restoration, oh God. Restoration, oh God. Restoration, oh God. Restoration, oh God. Restoration of the gifts of the Spirit. Restoration of the wisdom of the Spirit. Restoration of passion. Passion for God. Restoration of passion, restoration of hunger, spiritual seriousness, hunger for Bible studies, hunger for prayer, hunger for fasting, hunger for the house of God, hunger to see his kingdom come. Take your place. Take your place. Pray it from your heart. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Listen. Pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere. Pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere. Don't allow the things of the flesh pollute your spiritual atmosphere. It will destroy you, I tell you. Some of us is friends. I'm not teaching you to hate people. The character of the Christ is love. But you cannot give everybody access to pollute your environment with everything. No. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal. Please don't say it does not matter. The true spirit of holiness. Let me tell you the truth. The true spirit of holiness is the atmosphere that brings the presence of God. The true spirit of holiness. Don't trivialize it. The true spirit of holiness is what creates the atmosphere of the spirit. Because he's called Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. There is a beauty that holiness brings. It's called the beauty of holiness. Culture your atmosphere. Take God seriously. No one leg in, one leg out and you are just playing around. Don't be careless with your life. Hallelujah. I just sense a need that we should make this prayer again a final point because like Samson, there are people who have lost touch with certain virtues. You receive certain things, maybe in a meeting or in koinonia or somewhere or an impartation. A man of God laid hands on you and activated spiritual possibilities. But some of us, you did not know how to fan it to flame. There are some of us here the level of the prophetic you should be walking in now, if you were consistent with God, you would have been walking in notable levels, but you are still at that level. There are some of us, the level of the teaching grace, if you were only serious with the word, you read your Bible once in a month, but look what you are doing. Imagine if you read it every day. Hallelujah. He said, cast me not away from your presence. Take not your spirit from me. We need that restoration. And we're going to pray. Make this prayer personal. Listen. You know where you are slacking in the spirit. Don't feel condemned. But you must sustain grace to catch up. Some of us is our prayer life. There's really nothing left there. Some of us is our word life. You are a prayer machine. But your word content is low. So there is wrong interpretation to your spiritual things. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, a restoration. Mention the area you want him to restore you. Lord, I need a restoration of your presence. I used to carry heavy weights of your presence. Everyone who came around me felt that presence. But for some reason, oh God, I've lost it. Pray. Restoration.
your hands as I pray for you. Fire is going to come on a lot of people. Just in one minute, there will be activations and impartations. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. There are a number of people in this place that the fire must be restored through apostolic fire, through prophetic fire. At the count of three, listen. I want you to shout that name, Jesus. As you shout that name, for many of you from tonight, you will go back and the dreams will be restored. For many of you, right away, the healing anointing comes. Lift your voice. Father, I pray that in the next one minute, let there be a mighty restoration and an impartation. As your people shout that name, I pray that your glory will fall on them. Right now, one, two, three. Receive it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Receive it. My goodness, help them. That impartation. That impartation. Receive it right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. Dreams. 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 The Lord is activating dreams. Prophetic dreams. Symbolic dreams. restoration of healing power the healing anointing the healing anointing the healing anointing hallelujah the healing anointing is falling i don't know why god is talking to me about healing the healing anointing receive it right now lord where are they where are they where are they take it take it now 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 the healing virtue I release it from the spirit power to heal power to heal power to heal in the name of the Lord Jesus power to heal power to heal in the name of Jesus power to heal in the name of Jesus I hear my spirit the gift of utterance utterance Lord where are those people like fire will come upon you some of you on your mouth literally utterance utterance I impart it right now right now right now utterance inside and outside fire is falling Mantles of utterance. of God. Hallelujah. Just one last one. And then we'll take the altar call. Discernment. This one will come on us. Many of you don't know what discernment is. The ability to sustain capacity in the spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand by this apostolic anointing. Activate discernment in your people right now. At the count of three. One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it everywhere, inside and outside. The ability to sense the impulses of the spirit realm. The impulses of the spirit realm. The ability to understand the language of God. 
the language of God the language of God There are people here who have never given their hearts to Jesus Christ. Probably you were invited here for the first time. And there are still people here. Listen, please don't be distracted. Those under the anointing, just leave them, please. There are people here who are saying, man of God, I want to make it right with my maker tonight. I love him. I gave my heart to Christ. But for some reason, I found myself derailing. And tonight, I'm coming to tell him, Lord... I want to start afresh. I don't care whether you're a preacher or whatever. Make your way to the front right now. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. God bless you. There are people like that. Appreciate them as they're coming. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. God bless you, my dear. God bless you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Bless you, sir. Bless you, ma. Clear the way for those coming outside. Koinonia, celebrate them. Come, keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you. Don't let anybody stop you. Keep coming. Those outside, clear the way for them. Keep coming. Don't let any devil stop you. Thank you so much for coming. This concerns your soul, your life, and everything. Lift your right hand and from the depth of your heart, I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus. Some of you, as you pray, the power of God, that hold of sin will leave you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I come to you just as a child. I ask you to have mercy on me. Forgive my sins. I receive Jesus Christ into my life. Join them, please. From today, I declare that I have eternal life in my spirit. I'm a child of God, genuinely saved. From today, the power of sin, of Satan, and the flesh is broken over my life. I'm a new creation in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for our brothers and sisters. We love them and we receive them into the fold. Lord, you know the challenges and the encumbrances that have stopped them from being passionate about the things of God. I pray tonight that they will go back with renewed strength. That in this place tonight may they find strength in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every habit, every spirit, every challenge that has held you bound, I cause it to its root in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and we welcome you into the greatest family in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. Please follow the ushers waving their hands. They will have your information and will communicate you. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline 